very good afternoon welcome to the monthly nssf monthly school parade this is when we get to our general assembly and we discuss money in our school of money we have moved this journey for over uh, some time and every month we get together in on our general assembly and discuss money so welcome today we are doing budget my name is apollo mboa in this school i am the headmaster Thank you all for making it on time. The late comers, will see, will I see you under, I see in my office, uh, stay under the tree. Don't join the others, I'll see in my office. Over, that, over time we have been covering quite a number of subjects and uh, I just want to recap a little. We've done savings in January. In so January we had elab uh, elaborated a lot on savings. We had uh, Joan, uh, Chisule and uh, Grace elaborate savings. Savings is you making some uh, putting aside something for your future making your future bright brighter then in february we came to debt 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 that is you consuming from your from your future to take care of your present or even your past and uh, two gentlemen took us through livingstone uh, daniel and uh, tilda they discussed to, uh, quite a lot of that and we we continue on the journey today we are going to do budget but first some disclaimers this is being recorded and uh, by you coming in, uh, in in this session you are waiving your rights that uh, your rights to anything and uh, someone will come out the legal things and tell you those things but i'm just want to tell you about that i also need to give this disclaimer that everyone is unique we've been doing this for quite some time and uh, I get calls or I get to meet people and they say, you guys are taking us off our toes. We can't sleep. You are telling me I am doing so badly. So things are happening. I, you guys are, no, 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 no. I want you to study your own journey. Pick out, not everything that is said here is for you. Pick out what is for you and then let the, uh, there's something for you, then there's something for someone else. Not everything is for you. Your journey is unique and it's very unique. Action is key. Now, if we keep talking, uh, fortunately, me, I'm paid to talk. My job here is to talk. So I will talk my, uh, and, and I will get paid. Now, no one is paying you to talk. All you can do is action. So leave the talking to Apollo, you do the action. The only things will change in your life if you have some action. Good afternoon. Apollo Mboa, headmaster, is my name. And today we are going to talk about budgets. Budgets. But before I do the budget, I will ask... Esther, to please place our poll and uh, we understand who is here, who is here with us. We need to understand uh, so that we are relevant to you. We need to understand what's your age bracket, your biological age, your declared age. We need to understand uh, some of you have left out the, the years of the war. You have left out the COVID year, but are you, between, are you below 20? Are you between 20 and 30? Are you 30 to 40? 40 or above 50. Kindly let us know so that we can be relevant to you. The panelists, the experts are here to make sure that they address you in your age brackets. In uh, four, three, two, one, kindly stop the poll and let us know who we have. Uh, let's see those results. Yes, the majority of our participants. 74% of our participants are between 30 years to 40 years. 70% of our participants are between 20 to 30 years. And the least, the, the minority is above 50. So when we are talking about budget today, and what is a budget to you? These, uh, the, the, the gentlemen and ladies today are going to labor to define it in your different ages. I, I, I will give them the hard work. A budget is you telling your money where it should go instead of wondering where it went. To some people, a budget is an excuse for being mean. You see, when someone asks you for something, you say, it's not on my budget. For other people, a budget is a guide, a path to their goal. What is the budget to you? Now, every time we come out here to tell you about these things, I need you to personalize this message and understand what does it mean to me. So what is it to me? Is it a guide through your life? Is it something you scribble down uh, just to, to, to look fancy and look cool? Is it something you, uh, you use to go and look for funding and then after discard? 
I don't know. What does that mean to you? So today we have a group. I won't call it a group, but we have distinguished fellows. I, I, I hope that's the word from the different uh, parts. But before we do that, I would want to just take you through if uh, Shadrach is uh, is a good person. He will share my screen. But before he shares my screen, let's usually we, we, we can never get to do this at the we do this at the end, but let me do this at the beginning. There is a whole crew that makes all this happen. We have the back office team, uh SSA, Anna Maria, Fiona, and Jackie, the NSSF team. Thank you. Today I want to thank you before people start dropping off. We have a digital team from marketing, John and uh, and, and his other fellows. We thank you. There is a back office team, and today, uh, I, you know, these, are, these guys will never, you'll never see, but I will ask the camera to just point at my right, please. Just move over. I know uh, one of the cameras to just, no, this other side. The guys that are keep, keep doing, switching those photos, yes. Those photos, now they have not put themselves. I see they have put someone else. These guys, yes, that g those guys. Those guys make everything happen. And we are grateful to them. That is live extreme. Live extreme. And uh, when you need them kindly, talk to me. But you can reach them directly. But talk to me, I'll, you'll g I'll get you a deal. Of course, for a cut. So, to get to my point, why does NSSF interest itself in financial literacy? And if uh, live stream is kind enough to share with me, to share with the public, the screen, the, the screen why are we getting in that space of people's people's finances why is it that nssf is interesting itself what is it that we want people to understand and you will all you will all agree that your personal finance is your personal business why is in nssf getting in there besides they haven't given you 20 percent now they're talking about your own personal b business but as nssf we have realized that we have been of we have fulfilled our mandate 120 percent but we want to come back and then be of purpose to you. What is it that we can do with you to understand? So, so that at the time when you pick your money, our mandate is simple. We pick money from you, keep it. Then when the law allows you, you come and pick it and take it. We pick it, keep it, you take it. We pick it, keep it, then you take it. We'll do that and we can do that over and over again. And we are being excellent because every month we are collecting over 100 billion. So we force you to give to bring us to give us your money. We keep it, we grow it, we give you more as you go away. So that's our mandate. But is it of purpose to you? Because when you pick this money at exit, you tend to want to show us that you need we you, you can actually eat this money. And within three months we can't see this money. So much as over sixty billion leaves NSSF every month, we cannot see it in the public. So we want to go back to your children. We want to come to you when you are working. And we want to come to you when you are, you have left uh, employment and understand your money journey. Let's, let's talk about money while you are in this, uh, all through these, these, these bits. Because we believe at NSSF, we believe that you do not start things at 55. You start while you are in employment. So why are we interesting ourselves in your personal uh, finance? It's because you need to start while you are still in employment. And... Besides, employment is a beautiful thing. You have all those good things. You have the salary, you have airtime, you have medical, you have job title, you have all these things. But these things surely come to an end. And when, you, when they come to an end, NSSF kicks in. It gives you your money. Now, you intend to compensate your livelihood with the, the NSSF money. You've been receiving a salary. Now, it's no longer coming. So, can I start receiving a salary for my NSSF money? And maybe it's not big enough. You start coming up with all those projects that you should have done well in employment and trying them out at 55. We are saying as NSSF, let us start all these things. Let us, while you're in employment, while you can afford to lose something and still go back and get a salary. And then when you get out of employment, just pick on whatever you started while you're in employment and move on. So NSSF, we're interesting ourselves because we want to see that change. And finally, finally, one, one of the things that we keep insisting on is you need to start. If you didn't start yesterday, today is the best time. Start now with what you have, not after retirement. Start now because for sure, retirement is coming. Allow me to stop there and I say thank you for coming, uh, for tuning in, for 
being a part of this, I want to take you now directly to our panelists. One of them is running late, but uh, uh, she's notified us, but she will be joining the conversation as soon as she can. It is my pleasure. It is my very, very good pleasure. Sometimes you... One of the things I have learned from this whole exercise, I th and I think even if NSSF stops paying me, I can continue doing this over and over again. Why? Because I've gotten to meet quite a number of celebrities. I can tell you, in this room, this room is full of celebrities, and uh, I get the opportunity to introduce them. To start with, the fairest of them all, Daniel Chaudhry, a trainer. A trainer in sales. He's an author. He has been an expert in over 20 African countries. He's a chartered technical expert of the U for the European Investment Bank. He has conducted training uh, for International Finance Corporation, Roofings, Coca-Cola, NSSF, DFCU, Parliament of Uganda, the Kenya Justice Commission, Barclays Bank, Steel and Tube, MTN. We will, uh, that we will go on and on and on. And it, will, it, will not, it won't end now. He keeps updating his programs. He's, I mean, I've been seeing this man for the last five years, and every time he's fresh. Daniel holds a degree in, 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 in bachelor's of administration. He holds with marketing. He holds uh, an MBA from Ake University. He once was employed at MTN, so I think he's looking at his 20% also. And has, uh, he's been with Toyota Uganda. He's been with Lucky fa uh, Family Businesses. Uh, Lanit Institute of Technology, Dar es Salaam, Makaya University Entrepreneurship Center. He has expertise in so many things, but there are three papers. I, do I will not indulge myself. Please join me to welcome Daniel Chaudhry. Welcome, Daniel. Thank you. Ah, yeah, you, you are now in class. You are in class. Next to Daniel is another amazing lady. I said Daniel was the fairest of them all. Mm -hmm. I was just, uh, I don't know. <laughs> you just learn. <laughs> Next to Daniel is Beatrice, popularly known as B3, a certified coach, a speaker, a trainer, certified with John Maxwell team. She's a financial coach with straightforward financial growth, SSFG. For those of you who have been following us, we give up these books. And today, if you look at me, if you can find me, I, I, I'll give you a copy. For sure, I'll give you a copy. She's an author. She's a mother of three biological children, but a mother of very many others. Mm. Very many others. Together with her husband, Jeremy, they are blessed with many other children of God. I am one of them. Hey. And so are you. <laughs> they mentor young mothers, young people. Beatrice is passionate about helping people, organizations, maximize and discover their potential. She has written two books, Powerful Living and Enjoying Your Bible. Please, Join me to welcome Beatrice, <laughs> B3. Her hobby is music and poetry. And finally, I will not tell you who was late, but uh, <laughs> we have all our final. I even didn't say that there was anyone late, no. <laughs> finally, Natalie Bitature. Natalie Bitature is, when you talk about the name Bitature, you, you know, you know. Those of you who know, you know. <laughs> but she's here with us. And I am the MC. <laughs> uh, the video needs to take a camera uh, in a, a shot. Uh, they know that I am there also. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, now they know. So Natalie is a, a graduate from graduate from Kell University. She's a graduate from London School of Business. She's a social entrepreneur. Uh, she also obtained a master's in social entrepreneurship from Holt University. Guys, you will understand this. Just go to Google and, and, and put them on. I Me, mean, I'm just reading them. I, I will tell you I will don't understand them. She's the chief. She has worked as a chief development officer at Teturi Properties, as an intern in investment banking at Stanbic Bank. She's also a business development associate with Chapter 10. Bitature has also, Natalie, this, bit, this Natalie here, has also founded uh, Musana Courts, Musana Cuts, uh, the one that provides a solution for Rolex and uh, all those other things in a cleaner, safer, efficient way. She, I want to skip some of these things and I go down, 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 down. She's also the chief, chief of staff 
for the Simba group. Simba group will we'll, we'll get a chance to ask her what that is because it's also here, but it's, it's another page. I don't want to go into that. Natalie has co-founded two service businesses in Kampala, Teteru, te, te, teru Properties and Handyman. You'll forgive me. I'm nervous. Just reading these things. Also, Natalie has been listed as one of the 30 people under 30 influential people by Forbes magazine. Yes, Forbes. Forbes is, is, is international. Allow me, uh, join me to welcome Natalie. Our moderator is Daniel. Daniel, yes. kindly. Budgeting for your financial success. Your budget, your reflection. You are the experts. Uh, thank you so much, Apollo. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I want to welcome all of you. If you have made some time this afternoon to tune in and, and listen and watch this program. Uh, we don't take it lightly, and we're going to ensure that this afternoon is worth your time. And we're just going to have a conversation, a very family-like conversation about money, about budgeting. Clearly, the, the topic is uh, very incisive, and I know this is a topic that is affecting all of us. Many of us probably will struggle with budgeting, with finances, personal finance. So at some point within this discussion, we'll open the floor for you to ask questions. So we don't want to just be like a monologue, one-sided conversation. We want you to ask us some of the questions that you have in as far as budgeting is concerned. But here's the topic, again, budget your financial success. Your budget, your reflection. With me, I have incredibly two Phantom Glorious ladies. Don't, that's my word. Please don't add it onto your dictionary. That's my word. But I, I have Beatrice here, and I have Natalie here. These are all people that I admire immensely. And in one way or another, my path has crossed with them. And I have to tell you that I have not remained the same, listening to them, interacting with each one of them. So this afternoon, they're also going to be interacting with you, sharing their thoughts about money, about budgeting. So straight away, I'll go to Beatrice. Mm -hmm. Beatrice, just briefly, we're talking about your budget, your reflection. So can you just tell us briefly, talk to us about yourself in, in reflection to this topic today. What's your expertise in as far as financial management is concerned? Because I know you are a coach, so we could start right there. Hi, Daniel. Thank you so much. When you call me an expert, that's very scary. <laughs> I, I'm not an expert. I'm a learner, a continuous <laughs> learner. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to financial management, everything that I know right now, I would mostly attribute to the straightforward financial growth coaching uh, team. There's a book written by Moses Mukisa straightforward financial growth nssf has been so generous to keep giving that away if you don't have one you should get it so i i don't know we say i talk about my expertise yeah. in budgeting i am really not an expert but i've been a continuous learner and i think part of today maybe we'll be sharing bits of our story and our journey but yeah. my journey was that i struggled with budgeting i thought it was yeah. for a certain type of person with a yeah. personality type yeah. it was for people who like to calculate People who like to think about money. Yeah. In fact, in my head, they were mean people <laughs> who liked budgeting. But then continuously, my results yeah. and those of the people who knew how to budget their money. Because I like what Apollo said earlier. He said that budgeting is telling your money where to go. Yeah. And so if, if you don't tell your money where to go, your money will tell you where to go. <laughs> uh, in Uganda, yeah. the Luganda language, they say, Sente zikutuma. So yeah. money can send you around. <laughs> If you don't send it around, it sends you around. So I think yeah. for me, I am a continuous learner. I've seen the effects and impact when I've embraced budgeting, yeah. planning for money, simple ways for different types of people, yeah. um, and it's working. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Beatrice. Um, let me also uh, interject a little bit and come to my good friend, Natalie. Natalie, um, without a question, when a lot of people hear Bikature, they know there is a big conglomerate, there's a big organization, there's a big group of companies, and you have grown up in that. And oftentimes people start thinking, okay, Natalie is born in all of this big empire, but they don't know exactly the amount of effort and the amount of work that you put in. So I just wanted to ask you this question. What's your view about budgeting? <laughs> well, to get things to the size that they are, you have to have a budget, you yeah. have to have a plan. Yeah. These are just things that have been necessary 
all my life. So as yeah. Beatrice was talking, I'm trying to think, when did I learn about budgeting? <laughs> I was a child. <laughs> In our house, yeah. everything has a budget. Yes. If you want something, you have to explain why you want it. Have you done a price comparison with other yeah. items? Yeah. Even if it's like a pair of shoes or your friend has this, you want it, you have to explain to your parents, this is the budget I have assessed. This is what I think it should cost. Yeah. This is the most expensive one. This is the cheaper one. But yeah. this one has this level of quality. Yeah. Now, here is the strategy. If we buy this now, then that means within three months, I can have the money to buy this other thing. So I've learned it from when I was very young, and it's a part of something I grew up with. Yeah. So by the time I moved into the business world, it yeah. was now about budgeting on a bigger scale yes. for a company, different departments, every yeah. quarter, every month, every yeah. week. How do you hit your targets? How do you understand that? I like and that. I think going through that, I've understood the difference in a personal budget and a business budget, and now I understand the value. Okay. No, no, I just want to follow up on that question. Uh, actually, you said something very interesting. A business budget, a personal budget. And you know, a lot of us struggle with the personal budget. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your view on that? How can you help somebody who's watching this program that has been struggling badly about personal budgeting? They get their salary, but before they get home in the evening, the money is pretty much gone. <laughs> They've spent it here and there and all of that. Uh, they need help. So now, if that's your case, yeah. if you want that to be you next month, feel free, continue what you're doing. <laughs> but if you want to make a change, then you have to change something you're doing. Yeah. So you have to create the habit of budgeting. Before your money comes, you should know how I want to spend that money, yeah. not what I want to spend it on. Allocate out of 100% of my budget, yeah. how much do I need to spend on things like rent, food, necessities? Mm. How much do I want to plan to save? 20%, 30%. How much do I need to invest in something this month? Do I need to buy something, repair my car, yeah. buy something for my child? Plan that in advance. Before you've attached small, small things, I also want to go for this party. I also want to spend money on this gift for this person. I also want to do that. Yeah. So you plan your budget into sections. So there's discretionary spending, which is the fun, fun things. Mm. Plan for that in advance. This is the percentage of my salary that I can spend on good things. And I don't have to feel guilty because yeah. I've planned for it. This is the percent that I have to save because in six months I have to pay school fees. In this many months I have to do this. I have to pay for my house. I have to pay for necessities. Yeah. So it helps so much to plan those things before the money touches you. Because once it's there, it's easy to just spend it. So I like that. No, I mean, that's just, that's deep. Uh, thank you for that. So l let me come back to you, uh, uh, Beatrice. Mm -hmm. um, still, we're talking about personal budgeting. Um, and you said at the beginning of the conversation that you struggled with it. Yeah. But right now, do you have like a blueprint? You as Beatrice and your salaries and you as Beatrice Bimanzi as a family, uh, do you have like a blueprint of what you follow that yes. has actually worked for you? Absolutely. And, and can you maybe let us also get to know about that? Yeah, so I really... That? Yeah, I really like what Natalie said. And I like that our stories are very different. Yeah. Because, and that's what we are talking about now. When you learn these things, you can give your children, even if you, you don't have children yet, like the next generation has a better place to start at. Because for me, in my family, money was for the adults. Okay? So they That's told you what they could and couldn't afford, afford, period. Not because of any reason. It was there's no money. Yeah. There's always no money. So you just know there's no money. So and, and the only thing I did with money was spend it. When they're giving you to go to the shop, buy something, yeah. I never really had to plan for anything. So the first time you're given money, you have pocket money, you're going to school, and it's spent by the evening because you're supposed to finish the money. Yeah. The point is to eat it. That's what you do with <laughs> money. I didn't know about budgeting or whatever. And I had this blueprint. Either use it or give it away. Yeah. And as an adult, not too long ago, a few years ago coming into this space where you're actually learning about taking care of your finances, years into working and NSSF is taking, and in fact I felt like NSSF was the enemy. These people who take Taking our money, money away. and then they yes. pretend that they want to give it to us at 55. <laughs> you know, it's, and then you feel like 55 is so far away, yes. and they are taking away my money by force, you know, because you think you want to, that's your money for eating. Yes. So money was for eating, the blueprint. Yeah. But learning, yes, Daniel, I've learned how, and it's been, it was a difficult journey for me. Yeah. Because sh transforming from the why, you have to know why. I think yeah. that everything you want to do sustainably has to have habits around it. Natalie talked about that. Mm, habits, like that. why? Habits determine your future, whether you like it or not. The habits you have right now are deciding what you want, what you're going to be, not your desire. Your desire is not taking you anywhere. We all have desires, but our habits take us where we want to go at the end of the day. So the habits you have right now are creating your future. Yeah. So if your habits around money are spending, you're going to be broke. 
if you, spending doesn't make you rich the money that that's yours to keep some of us all you have is nssf actually which they took by force so the money you have is the one that you've saved for investment the rest of it spending makes you feel rich and good but it's not good for you and of course spending is inevitable but at the end of the day what has worked for me and my husband <coughs> and even in business is these percentages that are advised in straightforward financial growth they are so simple for especially if you're not a very detailed person all i know is that when i get money in my hands the first two things i do i take off 10% because i right. I, I tithe i yeah. give that to, to god right. and then 20% is mine saving yeah. like i don't have to think about tomatoes whatever is left yeah. i have to live off of it why if you were paid a million shillings a month you can live off of it if they increase your salary to 5 million you will live off of it if they reduce it to 500,000 you can live off of it you decide what happens but if i don't take off that 20 percent the future is not good yeah. so for me the habits now are minimum bare minimum beatrice 10 percent tithe 20 percent saving whatever is left yeah. you can then give spend so that it's not it's not i'm not reacting yeah to, to my money but I was yeah. like that before so I had I would actually save if I have money left yeah and then of course I was always in and emergency mo mo mode the time yeah there no no and there was no money and I was always praying <laughs> about money yeah yeah no I, I hope you really pick <coughs> this uh, uh, all of you of tuning uh, I want to come back to to Natalie uh, Natalie do you have a personal habits when it comes to personal finance uh, because a lot of us would think uh, Natalie has got a lot of money so she doesn't really need to you know budget or save money <laughs> do, do you have a personal habit that you that that you have um, imbibed and kept going and which has worked for you you know in my family they call me patel, <laughs> patel. <laughs> that's the nickname <laughs> I'm not the spending one. <laughs> Before there's any kind of spending we first have to assess yeah. is it necessary why do you need this now is this the only way to get this is this the cheapest way is this the way that will add value you have to assess and do a market survey. Yeah. If you order it from here, if you buy it from here, if you do it this way, let's first make sure we're making the best decision. There's no yeah. such thing as spending money anyhow in our yeah. culture, in our family, in our businesses. And anyone who works with us knows that. Because yeah. my parents are exactly the same. All the finance managers are the same. You can't just say, I need this approval, please. Three million for this. Sit. What is it for? Where are the other ones? Have you compared the price? Mm -hmm. How much of value are we getting out of this? How long will it last? Have you assessed these things mm -hmm. before any kind of financial decision is made? Like so there's no such thing as easy money of just spend it, just buy it. Yeah. Nothing. If it's a birthday party, if it's a present, whatever it is, my yeah. parents will sit you down. Why do you need this? Yeah. Why should it be cost this much? What is the budget? Now within that budget, have you thought about this? Yeah. My mom will sit you down for a party. Yeah. What about drinks? Do you think it's rude to not have food at the party? You have to have your friends and they have to have food. Yeah. Now, are you having decorations? You have to fit in the budget. Yeah. So where are you going to cut? Is it the food? Is it the drinks? Mm -hmm. Is it the music? And you assess. So we're used to doing this in every aspect of life. Yeah. I think that's what makes it easier yeah. when it's tough things like salaries, or we need to renovate something, or you need to build something. I have the background of mm -hmm. assessment all the time. There's no, this is how much it costs, madam, just pay for it. Mm -hmm. Nope. Yeah. Why are you using that type of concrete? Why are you using this type of nails? Why have we done this? <laughs> so yeah. it's a bit of a nuisance. Yeah. I think when you first interact with us, they're like, but these people. <laughs> but you get yeah. used to it, and you learn to see where you can make those savings, where mm -hmm. you're not just spending money because the short-term goal is going to be met quickly. Yeah then you're going to cost yourself more in the long run. You have to think things through. And there's no such thing of, there's always just money sitting. I don't know who has that understanding. It always True. baffles me. True. There's People. not just piles of money. Oh, who has that. piles of money sitting? Who has piles Anyone who had, can afford to have piles of money yeah. has invested it. It's True. working for them. It's not just kind of sitting money. somewhere. Yes. And so I feel like that's a big misunderstanding that people have. You, the sooner you learn to make your money work for you, the yeah. sooner you have more money to work wow. with. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how you move forward in your own finances and your own, your personal budget and your company budget. Can you repeat that again? The sooner <laughs> you what? The sooner you. The sooner you learn to make your money work, work for, for you, you, the sooner you will have more money. You will have more money. Yeah. So, so to you, Natalie, are there some absolute priorities that you know consistently every month? There are these absolute priorities that I have to ensure the money is available. And what are those absolute priorities for you? And this is a question I'm also asking the same to Beatrice. Mm -hmm. But I want to hear exactly what you thought. In my personal budget, not in a yeah. company. Yeah, in your personal budget. But also we're talking to people. Some of them are actually business people. 
and um, I know they're doing business. Are there some absolute priorities for business? Are there some absolute priorities for personal? But then let's start with the personal. I think you always have to divide them by necessities and yeah. then things that are luxuries. Yeah. So necessities are things like where you're going to live. If you have to pay rent, you have to pay a mortgage, you have to pay for that. Yeah. Things like a salary, if I'm thinking of a company, or if you have someone who works in your home with you, yeah. those are non-negotiables. The end of the month comes, there are things you have to pay. You don't want to be asking for more time. You don't want credit. You don't want to say, I'm sorry. There are things you have to pay. Mm -hmm. Then there are things like food that you need. Yeah. But now food is like a spectrum. You can, you, there's a bare minimum, and yeah. then there's I can order takeout. I can go to a restaurant. Yeah. I can do those things. So you also have to make a budget for that. Yeah. So the way I like to divide it is there's house food, like groceries, and then there's a budget for going out food. Yeah. So that should be separate for so me. The going out, is it entertainment food? kind of arrangement is it an entertainment budget yeah that should be part of your entertainment budget yeah i wouldn't put it with like a shopping budget yes because that's different if i'm going to buy clothes or shoes or something that's, that's not, not the same budget of i've spent money in restaurants or i went to a bar or i did something like that yeah. but it's important to plan these things so many people will tell me oh i woke up on sunday my bank balance is down i drank too much and i spent so much i'm like how yeah. how did that even happen to you yeah if you didn't have a plan before you entered the club, that's why your money is gone. Yeah. You have to think about these things in advance. This is my budget for the night. When I reach here, that is it. Yeah. But that now takes self-discipline. That's why habits are so important. And the sooner you start practicing it, the better. There's yeah. so many talks about that with savings, but I think it also comes with your spending. Yeah. You need to practice to become the person you're trying to be. Yeah. You can't say in 10 years, I'll be this person who stops at this money, no, or I know this is my budget and I'm, I'm tough. Yeah. You don't just become that person. You yeah. practice it every day. Three <coughs> times out of five, you did it. Twice, you failed. Yeah. But you move forward. This month, I did it. I was on track. I yeah. hit my budget targets. Yeah. That's why in companies, we have actual and budget, and you have to see the variance. Did you hit the budget target? Why is it ahead of the target? Because that's what we ask now in finance meetings at a board level. Why are you out of your budget? What has gone wrong? Did you budget incorrectly or was there a huge event like COVID that mm -hmm. has messed up everything for you? But you have to be ready to answer those questions. Yeah. So you have to have that mindset and that analysis yeah. and that plan in advance. Yeah. No, th thank you so much, Natalie. Uh, Beatrice, Natalie said something very interesting about uh, those of us who like going to the bars mm -hmm. and like going uh, to the you know, fancy restaurants and hotels. Now, I know from the survey that Apollo just did there, the majority of these folks who are watching this program, they're between 20 and 30. Mm -hmm. Let me just be a little, and add to 35. Uh, you, especially for the men, not even just the men, let me also say the ladies. Uh, there are those who, who, they are like the spendthrift. They go, they are the one who spend on people. Like, they want to impress too much. Uh, that if I don't spend on this, they'll start talking bad, bad, bad about me and all of these kind of things. These people need help. They need some kind of advice. Mm -hmm. And every week in, week out, they go to the bar, they're the one who are having the, you know, visa card, and they just kind of swipe and all of that. And by the end of the day, they're miserable. Mm -hmm. They've made everybody else happy, but they go back in the house and they don't have any money and they're miserable. What do you want to advise them? Wow. Uh, stop it. <laughs> Um, uh, seriously, yeah, like, like, I think that you have to take responsibility for your life yeah. at the end of the day. If, if, I, if I'm going to live my life because I want to impress people, I think that's a sad way to live. Because you have to know, what do you want? And these things sound so nice, and, but it's true. Like, what do you really want in life? Yeah. What, what future do you desire? And desire is not enough. What are you doing to move towards that future? There are things that I want right now, but I can't afford them. I have to be honest with myself. There, there, there are things, I, and you know what that does? Because budgeting, like when we started learning to budget, my husband and I, my husband loved to budget, I didn't, so I really messed him up. So um, we, when we started sitting down and being honest with where we were, because we were living beyond our means, and many of us are, and you're not aware because you've not sat down to say, what are my fixed expenses? What am I spending on every month? And sometimes you're genuinely living beyond your means because maybe you grew up in a certain home and you don't know that your parents worked really hard. To get, by the time you, you experienced life, they didn't start there. 
and so forth. You want to start where they are and not build your own life. And that was my story. I wanted us to live in a certain home and whatever. Yeah. But we were young. We didn't have that sort of income. Yes. And so we had to sit down and say, what are our expenditures and what is our income? And our expenditure was more than our income. And so we sat down and said, where do we want to go? If we don't want to end up in a space where our life is full of financial emergencies and we leave nothing for our children, you have to pay now and play later. Or you play now and you pay later. And you find yourself at 55 with bad habits. Your children are the ones trying to take care of you. You're not a blessing to them in any way. And let me tell you, 55 comes quickly. It sure comes does. sooner than you think. Sure you feel 30, it's 25 years away. It's <sighs> even shorter than you've lived. Why are you reminding so I'm me? serious. <laughs> no, so you know what? Terrible. You know, you have to be honest with yourself. Look at your friends. Where are they going? That's where you're headed. So get yourself some new friends who think yeah. differently, who are raised differently, who yeah. have a different blueprint. And you know what? Be honest. What did we do? We made some serious decisions. Yes. We moved from a more comfortable home. Yeah to a home we could afford. It felt bad. I didn't even want my friends to visit. Yeah. But I was like, I'm paying now so well, that later later on I can live in a home that I love and can afford yes. and my children can have a better future. Yeah. We, we, didn't, we couldn't do DSTV Premium anymore. Meanwhile, we, didn't, we didn't barely watched this thing. But it yeah. was status. Always it made me feel good. Yeah. So we don't have it because we don't need it. And so we cut out things. We went into a budget and that's a luxury. Cut it out, cut it out. But guess what? We realized that even when we cut to bare minimum, yeah. our finances were still low. And that meant that we needed to work harder. Because sometimes it's, the budget reveals to you that the real problem is not that you're overspending, it's that you have little income. Well, I love that. That's what happened for us. Yeah. So we had to increase our income streams, yeah. start thinking what gifts do we have. Don't look down on any financial opportunity. Because sometimes the problem is not that you are a spendthrift. It's that the truth is that you have little money coming in. Yes. So then you have to open your mind and say, what do I need to do to increase income? Yeah. But when income increases, don't increase expenditure. That's the temptation. Don't increase expenditure. Mm -hmm. Buffer up the thing that Natalie said, that the sooner you get your money to work for you, the earlier you have more money for yourself. So you have to have, for me, those percentages work for me. That no matter, whatever income is placed in my hand, and if it's income that's unexpected, then... Save the majority of it, but also play a little. Don't get into so much saving that you wake up one day and eat all your money because you're frustrated. Why is this important? If there's this NSSF buffer coming and it finds you with the wrong blueprint, you're going to finish that money in a short time. It won't help you. But if you exercised yourself in saving, investment, and guess what? I realized I never thought about investment yeah. because I had no money to invest. Yeah. If, you're not, if you have no savings, you're not even looking for investment opportunities. Do you understand? So ground zero is start saving and start with what you have. It may seem so little, yeah. but if you save 100,000 shillings, it's 100,000 that you didn't have yesterday. Yeah. You're starting that journey towards, you know, strengthening your blueprint. So for me, that's what I'll say is take responsibility for your life. Yeah. Your story is not my story, Daniel. Sure, sure, if sure. we hang out and you're spending 500,000, yeah. maybe you have millions in on your account. Yes. But yes. if all I can afford, in my mind, by the time I'm going out, I yeah. know that I can spend 50,000 shillings. Yeah. I'll spend that, that, and I'll feel a little bad, yeah. but it, that bad feeling helps me to work harder and say, one day, I will be, I will be able yeah, to cover everyone's be bill. Yeah. But right now, I can't, and I feel bad, and let me feel wow. bad. So that's, that's I don't carry more money in my wallet than I can afford yeah. to spend. I love that. Yeah. Wow. Um, <laughs> You know, as you talked about that, I just it reminded me of about my personal story. You know, you talked about increased your income. Uh, I have grown up um, not having much, coming up from the north uh, with the insurgency, and we didn't really have a lot to pay school fees. I had to work from one place to the other, and I promised myself that when I make it, Ooh. when I make it, I, I am going to have everything that I said I would never have. Mm. So my, my my way of thinking is produce. Daniel, do you want to drive a new Mercedes-Benz? Produce as much as possible to buy that Benz. You want to buy this uh, piece of property in this location? Produce as much as possible so you can be able to you know, acquire that. So I, I know there are people like, like, like me who they don't like do a lot of the, let me save and save and save for this number of years, and then I can be able to acquire this. For, I'm a businessman, so I'm having all these multiple things that I'm thinking about. I'm an author. Let me sell this number of books. I can have this. I'm a sales consultant. Let me get this number of companies to train, and I can be able to have this mm -hmm. amount of money. And, and I'm, in, I'm into real estate. Let me sell this one here so I can have this and do that. So, so is there a one 
shoe fit all model when it comes to these things called budgeting. So I'm going to start with you, Natalie, but I still want you to answer that question as well, Beatrice. So Natalie, is there one shoe fit all, or you know, there is? We can have a little bit of different, you know, budgeting models. Anything. Right. But what's yeah. important is you start to make an effort. Yeah. So first research about it. Go watch a video on YouTube. Yeah. Go talk to someone who you know budget. Read a book about it. Try yeah. and understand yeah. and then see what is going to work for me. Let me try this method of budgeting where it's 20%, 30%, 50% like this. Yeah. And see how that goes for two months and track it and measure it. Am I improving my spending habits? Do I balance at the end of the month? Am I spending more? Do I need more income? Yeah. So that you start to realize and assess and analyze this data that you have. Unfortunately, most of us are making decisions without any information to base that decision on. How much do you spend per month on going out? How much do you spend per month on emergencies? Some people have emergencies all the time. A child is sick, mm. now your brother is sick, now this one in the village needs money, yeah. and half your money is going in emergencies, and you don't realize because you think it's just this one time. Yeah. It's just this one time. Once you start tracking everything and measuring it, yeah. you start to have a data point yeah. to now make decisions. I need to start saying no to this. I need to start investing in financial literacy. I yeah. need to start investing in this. I need to start to save for this. Yeah. Sometimes it helps to have a goal. Yes. But I think it's the act of beginning to budget. Don't think budgeting is for organized people yes. and yes. mean people. <laughs> <laughs> that was that me. Kills me. <laughs> First, understand yeah. what is budgeting. I think too many people assume and have a mindset of that's not for me. Those are for those kinds of people. And we do the, make those decisions without first investigating. Yeah. Google is your friend. Just Google, what is this budgeting thing for real? Yeah. What does it really mean? How is it going to help me? I like How will it add value I, in my life? I put life? my village on Google. I, I'm that <laughs> famous now. Yeah, I get it, yeah. It's so helpful. But I think it's the act of trying. And yeah. once you start to putting an effort, definitely things will change. Oh, yeah. If you say, I'm giving myself to the end of this year to understand this budgeting well, yeah. by December, I will have a good budget and I'll be hitting my budget targets. It will be accurate. I know how my money is going. I yeah. know what I'm spending. I'll be there. So now start experimenting and trying. Okay, this month I made a mistake here. Here I under budget, here I over budget. Here this emergency happened and I spent too much. But how often does that emergency happen? Mm -hmm. Three months yeah. ago it happened, another three months ago it, it happened. happened. You need to start to collect this information so that you can start to make these changes. At least start the process. So by the end of the year, you'll be advising your friends, I yeah. started budgeting, this is how I do it, yeah. and this is how it has helped me. And you've got to be very intentional about yes. all of exactly. that. Exactly. Yes. Take notes of everything. <laughs> everything. And, and many of us don't have the habits of taking notes. Take notes, write it yeah. down, put write it in it your down. phone, every yeah. small thing. Oh no, that one doesn't count. It's like, no, <laughs> yeah. it all counts. Yeah. The money is coming through you, in yeah. or out, it counts. Yeah. Write mm. it down. Mm. Wow. No. Um, you want to add something on that? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel like Natalie has really spoken very well. Yeah. But you don't know what you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. And ignorance is terrible. We have, we are in the information age. I said I thought budgeting was for certain types of people. And that was the truth. And because of that, my mind was blocked. And I thought I knew better. I was living a better life. But I wasn't. And so first it begins with you take responsibility for your life. Who are you right now financially? Where are you right now? Like you, forget about your friends who you're trying to impress. Where are you financially? When you think about your finances, are you excited about the future or do you just totally freak out? Like right now when you think about where you are financially. Okay, now that you've defined reality, what, where do you want to go? So what do you need to do to move towards that? And I think the only way to learn about everything in life is by trying. You try out different things. I tried out all sorts of budgeting options. And for me, I would get overwhelmed by detail. Um, and, 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 and so if you're a person, it depends on who you are. As you do it, you figure, but you don't give up. You don't say, I think this thing doesn't work for me. The point is you keep trying until you find something that works. And so it might be that detail will work for you. It might be that, um, like for me, percentages work perfectly for me. And I have a good idea what I spent on what. Yeah. But also there are apps. There's even an app called Spending Tracker. It looks like a brown, a brown wallet. Every day I have an alarm that goes up at 9 p.m. on that spinning tracker that asks me to punch in because I know my problem. I need, I need an alarm. I'm not Natalie. I wasn't raised the way she was, thinking structured. about structured. But it's to think through, and, and I'm raising my children differently. But I, I then note down what I spent today and what came in. And I'm able to look at the end of the week, what's going on? How did I spend that much on that? What happened there? Yeah. And it shows you patterns. You'll find that every one of you has your pattern. But those patterns are leading you somewhere. Do you like where they are taking you? If, you, if, you ex, if you're more experienced as a as person who spends, 
that's telling you where the future is going and it's not very good wow. so you have to start thinking about that but for me it's those percentages it's have a money management plan and then use it use it and then say this isn't working then ask people who are ahead of you so that they can help you to um, navigate because they have experience in those areas where you don't yeah wow. <coughs> We're still just getting started. There is so much more where this is coming from, but I want to give the microphone back to the headmaster uh, to do something, and then we continue again. I hope you're learning. I'm really learning. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Uh, it's headmaster, sir. <laughs> yes, uh, we have quite a number of questions here, but before we get into the questions, uh, I'll ask uh, Nakato to, to, to put our second poll question. I... Play now, pain later. These are these are comments coming in through, and people are, are picking up different different things. The more you have your money work for you now, the more you will have of it later. Uh, people are saying brilliant minds here. Uh, they're saying my Samsung. They, mm? so someone was asking about a, 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 an app, but now I can see they are saying let's download that app, the spending tracker. Uh, she has already answered that. There are quite a number of questions. As we wait for the, let me let me just share these questions as we wait for the next poll question. How can percentages apply to us who don't have fixed income? There, there is no specific amount to earn, and we earn at different multiple times. How can percentages apply to us? Just take note of that. Uh, that's from Wilberforce Mugalu. Talk to talk about black tax. Some of us are paying black tax payback period. We cannot avoid helping our seminar, uh, our, se our, our Samaritans. Please note that. Please note that note doesn't come to a specific, I don't know. But talk about the black tax. Uh, I have learned to put a price on my black tax. Someone I think is answering this. Uh, I s if, I, if I have to spend, then I only spend on my mom and that is it. The only emergence I have is my mother. Th that's, that's someone answering the other person. Wow. Yes. Uh, are we able to have our poll question, please? I can see there are a number of thank yous coming in. Thank yous coming in. So the question is, do you follow a monthly budget? That is if you have. And the answer is yes or no. Ladies and gentlemen, do you follow a monthly budget? Yes or no? Uh, and we shall be closing that poll in the next three, two, three. One, someone saying that text send send our greetings to all those that have an anthem. Where did my money go? <laughs> that they are stuck. Quite, quite a number of us with uh, with. Uh, also send our greetings to the people who are saying life, whose life is always a financial emergency. Hashtag. Uh, I think this was picked from uh, B three. We are those people who also send our greetings. Those people are praying for a financial miracle all the time. And to all the Patels in the homes, <laughs> send our greetings. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, ah, uh, yeah. Then someone is saying, yes, our results are, do you follow a monthly budget? And 61% are saying no. 39% uh. are saying yes. So, Daniel, yeah. from there, kindly start with, uh, you can see when to how to track these questions. But someone is just saying, track your emergencies. Start tracking your emergencies. Yeah. If you have so many of those emergencies, then there's something wrong. Uh, allow me to go back to Daniel and we continue with that conversation. Thank you. No, thank you so much, Headmaster. Um, sir, I, I, I was told with this, my voice is not clear. Is that true? Okay, I can continue using this one. All right, so um, this brings me to a very interesting question. Somebody said, the only emergency I have is my mother. <laughs> now, a lot of us have uh, given this line of thinking that you see, I've got relatives. And I have got to help them. This one has this number of children. They're not able to pay them through school. And I have to send in some money every, every single month or every time to take care of that. And I find that that money, I'm sending it, but it's taking away from the money that I was supposed to save or do something with it. Now, a lot of us have these family responsibilities, mm -hmm. which is okay. But somehow we have used or we continue to use the family responsibilities and emergencies as uh, an excuse, if I'm to be as brutally honest. What, would, what kind of advice do you want to give us, uh, Beatrice, 
you know, so as those of us who are supporting so many of our family members through school and sickness in the home, we send money. This at home, we send money. And we said that, you see, if I don't send money, they start saying I'm bad. And then my, my, they call my mother, my mother start calling me, my dad start calling me, and then I don't feel very good about it. Mm. But you see, sometimes I don't want to send the money. So what would you advise me? Yeah. And, um, thank you, Daniel. I think it's noble. It's very noble to be able to support others. I believe in it very much. Why? I'm a result of support from family. I'm sure it was an emergency for someone for many years. And so I, I know that it's noble. But what are we talking about today? Learning to plan, right? And I'm one of those who my belief was give away all the money you can. Because I sort of felt like I owed the world for what they had done for me. And someone sat me down and, and explained to me that you see, if you keep if you if you don't secure the future, which is what saving does for you, saving and investing, if you don't secure the future first, remember we're not saying don't spend. It's not it's not possible. We're also not saying don't support others. Yeah. But we are saying that you have to, if you don't do that, eventually when you want to support on a bigger scale, you'll not be able to. You really won't. But the more you, the more you have, the more money you have working for you, and in the beginning it's hard work, it's a lot more labor, then the more you, you are able to support freely. Because money buys you the freedom to be able to support. But these emergencies... Do you realize that they show up when you have income? Every so, time. yeah, if you didn't have the money, what would happen? <coughs> You're just not able to. So, you actually have to learn to plan your giving. And that's why it's important to write down what are your, they are no longer emergencies. Let them, let's not call them that. Because if you know you have to support five people with school fees, then you know you have these people. Where can you get support for them? There are all sorts of organizations helping different types of people. Must it come from your pocket? Can you start fundraising from friends and tell them, if you give me 100K, we have a fund, create a fund to do that. F think, but also you need to work harder. Clearly, if these are people who you must support, then you have to work harder. Because, But then I'm begging you, if one of the things you should live with is when you get money in your hands, secure the future first. Pay yourself first, first, okay? Put aside money for the future. And that money grows. Be patient. We are an impatient generation. It Extremely. compounds. Extremely. With time, after a few years, that money works for you so well that you're able to pay school fees for 10 people without sweating and without touching your future. Do you understand? But be patient now. Understand where you are. Right now, you're not able to support five people. It feels bad. It's true. How many can you support? Two. Be honest with your family. And then... Find other people who can help. Yeah. Look beyond yourself. Work harder. But please secure the future first. Why? That money is going to give you the opportunity with your big heart to support more people with time. But if you don't do that, you're going to get to a point where even with your desire, you're not able to. Someone wrote on the chat that I'm terrible with managing finances. You're not. You're just not exercised in managing finances. No one who is terrible at this or the other. It's the more experience you have with something, the better you get at it. So you just need to change your mindset and not say, I'm bad with this. It's that you're not experienced at it. So please, secure the future. Support your family. Be honest with them. Have the difficult conversations. Engage other people. But don't get into your future and bring it and sort of rob from the future into the present. Guess what? You're going into that future. Yeah. And you'll find nothing waiting for you there. Wow. Wow. Um, wow. Um, that's deep. I don't know whether it's deep to you the way it is to me, uh, but that's deep. Thank you so much, Beatrice. Uh, Natalie, about the fear of confronting or facing or interacting with your relatives, especially the one you love the most. <laughs> you know, the, the, the challenge with most of us is the fear to, to tell them the truth. Yeah. I know that fear because I get the WhatsApp and yeah. before I open it, I know this person is asking for money. Mm. Yeah. I just, I feel that feeling in my, I know that's yeah. what you've come that, for. That anxiety. But How you do know, you deal with it? The way my dad explained it to me, you have to think of life like a water tank. So you know how water tanks have a big opening at the top. Mm -hmm. This is where your inflow is coming. Yes. But now, all your expenses are the small pipes draining the money. Yeah. The more relatives you add, the more pipes are coming out. Small, small, wow. small, small, many, small, many, small. Wow. Now imagine him. He has thousands of tiny, yeah. tiny, yeah. tiny, tiny pipes. Wow. Just 
all the time. Yeah. And with gravity, the water is always flowing out. Mm. So him, he focuses on bringing in water. It has mm. to keep coming yeah, in because to. you can't remove all those pipes no. now at his stage. So I looked at those pipes. I said, nope. That shall not be me. Mm. Yeah. I see all our relatives, and the more people that know you, they even come and tell you, you know I'm your relative. Mm. I also don't know you. <laughs> but I think the problem I have with giving is it's not sustainable. I can't give you money, and then you're going to come back with the same problem or yeah. a different problem every month, and you have not yet figured your own life out. Yeah. So I ask you, I'm not just going to give you money for free and get out of my way, I don't have time. Yeah. Come, let's first talk. You don't get the money easily. What is your plan? What is your life goal? What school are you in? What are you going to start as a business? Yeah. How are you going to move? Because I am now invested in your life. Yes. Yeah. So I need you to start to succeed so you don't come to me every time you're sick or something is needed or the school fees. Mm -hmm. And not only is it you, you have like 12 other siblings. Yes. Oh, yeah. So I can't just hire all of you one by one, one by one. Okay, this one I've started the business. This one I'm paying school fees. We sit together. What is the plan? Within a year, you should not be coming to me for money. Mm. Let's like see that. how you're getting out of it. Yeah. And I think because my dad never had anyone to turn to for yeah. money. Yeah. From the time he was 14, yeah. Yeah. he can't l ask someone, oh, I'm having a problem, send me money, my daughter is sick. It's us to figure it out. So I'm grateful for that because it gives me agency in my life. From when I was younger, I have a problem. It is my responsibility to figure That's it out. Idea. I don't understand this. I go and ask someone for a solution. Yeah. Help me with this. It's very strange. You mean you never also used to go to daddy to say, you know, dad, I need... My dad will never say, here is the solution. He wants you to figure it out. That's why you have to now come and present him, these are my solutions, these are the budgets for each, these are the consequences I've thought about, which do you think is the best option? Then he will guide you and support you. But he won't say, this is the problem, here is the solution. It yeah. doesn't help you. Because no. you need to change your mindset, otherwise you're going to stay receiving yeah. forever. And you're at the mercy of NGOs, relatives, just this attitude and of someone things. will solve it for me, someone like will give it to me, the government will do it. Yeah. No, solve your own problems. We are very, very capable. It's not about the background you come from or the level of education you have. It's how you're using your mind. Wow. Be observant. Think of solutions. Ask questions. Use Google. Try something. Yes. Yeah. Don't come with the same problem all the time, <laughs> all, all the, the time, all the time. You're not moving forward. That yeah. one is not acceptable to me. We see how I can help you. And I'll even check on you. How is the business? How many cakes did you sell this month? Yeah. Uh -huh. How are you advertising? How can I support you intellectually yes. so that you grow yourself? Because also you get more self-esteem, more confidence. You yeah. become that person. Yeah. Look what you're saying you've done for your village. Yes. Who did it for you? I mean, I did it by Exactly. Yes. So now everyone else in your village should be inspired. If you can do it, yeah. I can also do, do it. it. Exactly. So take it upon yourself to solve your own problems. Yeah. Think of the solutions. And then people are more willing to help you. Totally. You come to me, oh, totally. I have this problem. You've sat. I also don't even want you to have help missed you the problem. Now. <laughs> exactly. But if you said, I have this problem now, this is what I can do, yeah. Yeah. but I'm short just this amount, I'm happy to help you. Yeah. Happy. Like Here it is. I'll even advertise your business on my WhatsApp. Come on, tell me how it's going. Yeah. And then you solve it for yourself. You dig yourself out, and that's how you take others with you. And then they also learn how you did it so that we solve our own problems. You take control of your own life. It's about taking responsibility. Wow. What I gather from these two incredibly awesome ladies is that when we talk about finances, we talk about money, we talk about budgeting, mindset is key. What's your mindset like in as far as money is concerned, in as far as helping, being the NGO that is helping your entire village is concerned? What's your mind, mindset like? And, and I want to ask, still, still coming back to you, Natalie, does personal development, does reading help? And because, you know, we have in this country, we have a culture of I've finished university, I've read from P1 to university. Daniel, don't tell me about reading. Uh, yes, I don't want to <laughs> read. For me, I, I'm, I'm not a reader. I like watching in state. Like, like, what advice can you give them in terms of personal development, but specifically also about reading? In as far as budgeting, finances, concern, all of that. I like what Beatrice said. I am a continuous learner. That is a better way to package it. And that, I think, is the attitude that takes you further in life. Because yeah. we will always be learning. But if you have this mental block of, I don't want to learn, I don't want to read, now I know everything, which many young people have, Bambi. Which is You're terrible. shooting yourself. No one can help you. Are You're you also really not going that? to move are forward. You, are you really listening Continuous to what Natalie said? learning. If you are now so terrified of books and the trauma of school is too much, <laughs> go on YouTube. Get a podcast. Yeah. Sit and have a conversation if you don't even want to do that. And a lot of them don't even know much about the podcast, by the way. 
podcast. Yeah, we use much less MBs and you yes. can listen to anything all the time. Sitting in traffic, if you're waiting, if you're doing dishes, you're doing something podcast. at home. Podcast. Read a book. Talk to someone. Ask for advice. Even if it's just amongst your friends. Mm -hmm. Don't just talk about music videos and what we did last weekend. Yeah. So, what are you guys' goals this quarter? What is your goal this year? What are your plans? What is your dream? Start having higher level of conversations. Yeah. So that's how you start to develop yourself personally. Yeah. Start assessing yourself. Where am I? Yeah. Who do I want to be? How am I going to get there? Yeah. Because people are so ambitious. They'll be like, today I have nothing, but in five years, I'm going to have a million dollars. I'm going to live here. I'm going to have this car. And they tell you confidently. Yeah. And I'm like, good luck. Tell me how that goes. What's the blueprint? Really? Because you're not breaking it down. You're not yeah. being practical about it. Yeah. If you really want to earn a million dollars, say, okay, over five years, how much do I need to earn per year, per month? Yeah. That means what do I need to be doing today that's going to earn that amount of money per day yeah. so that in five years I get there? Yeah. That is a huge number. Yeah. Even if it's a million shillings, start with that. Say, I want to earn a million shillings. That is my money in the next six months. What does that mean? How am I going to get that income? What are my options? What are my gifts? What are my skills? Yeah. How am I going to get that in? Because you have to have that attitude of continuous learning. Because if you knew how to do it, you would already be doing That's it. it yeah. That is the yeah. fact. So first, you have to learn how to do it. And you have to always be learning. I don't think there's a week that goes by that I don't type something into Google or into YouTube. Yeah. How do I do this? What does this mean? Yeah. I, I've sat in meetings and I don't know the abbreviation. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> oh, okay, okay, yeah. now I get it. Yeah. But you have to just be open to learning. Yeah. The sooner you learn, the sooner you try it, the sooner you, now you have more feedback. Okay, yeah. it didn't work this way, but why didn't it work? Yeah. This is what was wrong. I adjust this, now I do this. That's how you find what works for you, and that's how you start to make progress in your own life. Yeah. Personal development is also for life, and it yeah. affects every aspect of your life. Yeah. So I think it's very important. Yeah. Wow. You want to add something on that? As, as Natalie was speaking, I thought to myself, I'm thinking about myself. Yeah. Because for me, personal finances, my God, was a real problem. I had a bad blueprint, okay? So you know when you have poverty ingrained in you, but you don't even know? You can look good, you dress well, you go to the office, but you're poor. You have a poor head. Yes. And you know, this is your money maker. If they got Natalie and I, and they took away all the money she has, yeah. and took away all the money I had, and then they gave us the same amount of money, in a month she would have more money than me. Do you know why? She has a mind that has been trained in finances yeah. better than I have. If they gave us now something to do with spiritual exercises, yeah. I would win her. I have been exercised more in that area than she probably has. Yeah. So the area you've been exercised in, the, your mind is your money maker. It's, yeah. not, it's not your skill. You will see people who have gone, you look at footballers, they make lots of money. Okay? Within two years of retirement, they are That's so money. broke, money. they are selling their what are they, medals. Yeah. What is that? It's because it's not about your ability to make money. It's here. Your mindset. And how does the mind get influenced? Knowledge. Listen to me. The more issues you, the more, the more lack of knowledge you have right now, the more ignorance you have, yeah. the more you must read right now about money. Because guess what? It means you're in a deeper hole. It means that the, the other person who grew up being taught about money is at an advantage. Compared, yeah. it doesn't matter where they drop them in the world, they'll beat you because their mind is exercised. Remember, we have the same muscles, but the one who has exercised their muscle has it stronger and has more strength in the muscle than you. It's not because you have different muscles. It's that one has exercised and you haven't. The mind is a muscle. Right now, you have to tell yourself, look, I'm broke. I have to become a reader. Yeah. It's a financial thermostat. If this mind of yours, it doesn't matter your ability. It doesn't matter how much money you're earning right now. I know people who are earning hundreds of millions but they are broke and people are earning much less and they're on their way to financial freedom okay. it's not about how much money you have in the uh, coming to you every month it's your ability to manage it how exercised are you and let me tell you without knowledge you cannot exercise what you don't know True. so how do you get the knowledge read for me now hey i read financial books at least one every month i'm yeah. not even kidding like yeah. As a matter of urgency, for the yes. sake of my children. Why? I have, I have so much ignorance about that subject, and I have to humble myself. And then I also hang around people who have more knowledge. I meet at least a mentor a month who I sit with, and I feel yeah. stupid after that. Yeah. And I feel like, what am I doing with my life after that? And I have to go and make changes. Because yeah. the point of the knowledge is to do. It's not just to have, you know, people can sit here and argue with you, Daniel, you about that? money. The, the point, point of the, the knowledge, knowledge is, is to, to do. do. Otherwise, people, there are people who like intellectual conversations. Yes. They can take you on, but how much is in your bank account? 
We can sit here and you have quoting Bill Gates. You're yeah. quoting who? That's good to know. What have you done with what you know? So get knowledge for the point of action. Then go do and say, I did it. It didn't work. I'm not understanding this. But if you sit back and say, for me, I can't read, that's okay. You'll stay broke. Yeah. Because your mind will remain blank, yeah. your mind will remain in ignorance and in darkness, and you'll continue. And it's not about your friends. No. It's not about impressing people and looking good. I can dress good and look good, but I'm broke. Looking good doesn't make you rich. Driving a certain car, you can be on it and it's alone and you're sweating, you're sleeping in that car, you're so broke, and your friends are impressed with you. Yeah. Take responsibility for your life. Start yeah. reading, Munange. If you're like me and you've had real ignorance financially, yeah. it means you have to read more than your friend. It, you can't just hang around rich friends to feel rich. You're broke, and you know it deep down. So read books. Re read. There's audible. In, in your taxi going home, put in earphones while others, are, while others are just blank. Listen to books. Then go do what they say. Yeah. Because especially books for people who have money, not people who have ideas. <laughs> and then go do what they say, yes. and you'll see great growth in your life. Wow, wow, wow. wow. You know, you know, uh, uh, Beatrice you said something very interesting that once a month you also make some time to meet people that know. And and, and recently I started some project for my personal development called Lunch with the CEO. Every Thursday, I make sure that I seek out any of the CEOs. Uh, recently, I had a meeting with uh, Jam, uh, James Onyuta of Brack. I mean, of Inca, Uganda. Previously, I met. Um, uh, What's her name um, from uh, URBS? Um, forgetting her name, um, but I met her recently. So I have this lunch with the CEO to learn what they know, but also lunch with an entrepreneur. Me and Natalia, we have met many times just to seek our, our thoughts out. The quality of association. I, I wrote a book, uh, Become a Sales Superstar and Dominate Your Market. And one of the chapters I wrote, and I said, if you walk with nine fools, you become the tenth. Now, now, a lot of us have got a lot of fools as our association. What does the quality of our association has to do with personal finance <laughs> development, with budgeting and all of this? I, I just want to know your thoughts about that. I think you just said it. Look, if you, if just look at your five closest friends. Those people who, if you had a party, you'd call them, pick up the phone. Look at them. Look at their finances. That's you. They are a reflection. If, you're, if the people closest to you are spenders, who like to live large and look like life is great when there's nothing much really going on, that's where you're headed. Because we are influenced by the people we hang out with, whether we want to. And you know the thing is that the Bible is one of those textbooks that I live by. It says that he who walks with the wise grows wise. It's a process. But a companion of fools suffers harm. So what happens is that it's a process. In the beginning, actually, you swear that they're not influencing you. Give it a little time. You start to talk like them. You start to spend like them. You start to act like them. So what do you need to do? You must have people around you who are ahead of you. I beg you, have a person ahead of you. Who, when you, If among your friends, everyone thinks you are the big fish, you're in trouble. If you're the one who speaks and everyone bows down, you're the one with the biggest bank balance, you're the one with the most wisdom, you're not growing, you're in real trouble. There's got to be people who are ahead of you. When they speak, you listen. When you ask questions, you, you humble yourself. So the people we spend time with, they influence our personal finances a lot. Right now, my friends, the people who I spend the most time with, every time we sit, yeah. look, even on WhatsApp, the conversations, once in a while someone send a message, guys, what's your current net worth? And you're just like, oh, gosh. Oh, what's your current net We had to answer that recently. What's your current net worth? What's your targeted net worth at the end of the year? And what are you going to do to get there? And then, what, what, yeah, you guys, those questions which mean you have to go and look at, uh, at the Excel, meaning that we have to have that stuff in. How much have you invested since the year began? We are in March. And so those are the friends I have right now. But those friends also lead us to their friends who are ahead of us, who when you sit with them, you leave feeling like, yeah, one day, Lord, we shall get there. But that they, you feel motivated. You feel, you, you, I don't know, you feel small. It's good to feel small. If you yeah. don't have people in your life who make you feel small, you're yeah. in trouble. You're in yeah. the wrong crowd. And you have to go yeah. and find them. Again, take response. Yeah. Don't think, me, they don't come to me. Where do you find them? Outside your circles, definitely, if you're asking that question, that's where you find them. You have to go out of your way, find these people, ask for lunches with them, yeah. walk in, feel small, be quiet, listen, Humble, take yeah. notes, go mm -hmm. try out what they said. You know, so yes, the quality of association is a big deal. Yeah. And you have to actually go out of your usual circles to find people who can challenge you 
to be bigger than you are right now. Yeah. Fantama Glorious. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, that's my word. Fantama Glorious. And I'm, I'm Mr. Fantama Glorious. I hope I'm doing a good job right here. And, and I hope you're learning. You want to say something about quality of association? Oh my God, that's yeah. so important. I love what Beatrice said. Uh, and you because know, I love that feeling of smiling, feeling small. Yeah. With us. The project that you're doing with us, you have a mastermind group that you Oh, about with her, yes, yes, with so women. Why did you do that? And in Sara is quite a ah, yeah. That started as a mentorship program, just yeah. because young women were messaging me on Facebook or on Twitter or on Instagram <coughs> asking for advice. Yeah. And I really love to give advice because yeah. anything that has helped me, I am happy to share it with any young woman who also is going through this. And now it's grown so much that we made a Facebook group. So now there's over 2,000 women. So I make an effort to make sure we're posting important things, yeah. useful articles, inspirational quotes, yeah. useful things, job opportunities, scholarships. The women who have businesses share their businesses. Yeah. And you grow your network. You grow your circles. You can speak to each other. Sometimes we do Zoom workshops together. Yeah. And we all have to introduce ourselves. And then you see them make connections with each other. It's so important. If I ever feel like this week I've talked too much, I'm the one giving advice, it yeah. means I'm not working on the other side. Mm -hmm. I also need to be in rooms where I'm the quiet one, where wow. I am listening. Wow. And I'm like, wow, I never thought about it that way. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. What? You find things you didn't even know existed. Yeah. Someone has done a, lived something or gone somewhere or done something that yeah. just blows your mind. You're like, you mean people can do this? Yeah. Wow. And I love that moment and that feeling because I'm like, eh, okay, I've seen. Now I've learned something else. This yeah. is a new goal. Yeah. This is something I can learn about. This is something I can Google. I'll even take notes. Sometimes my dad will be going for a boring function and he's just alone. He's like, does anyone want to come? No, no, no one wants to go with you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, let me come. I just sit there quietly as your assistant. Yeah. Up to now, he'll take me sometimes. This is just my assistant. Just let her in with us. <laughs> and you just sit and listen to these people yeah. Yeah. to see the way they speak, what they think about, how they analyze things, yeah. the kinds of conversations they have. It's on a whole other level. Yeah. And there's a reason, there's a reason these people are who they are. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to understand. How did you get there? What were yeah. the, path, the path you took, those steps? What are the small things you do every day yeah. that make you you and keep me me? Mm -hmm. And it's changing wow. those small things that will get me there. So that's why I don't have to th sit and worry, what will I be like in 10 years? Will I have made it? Will this have worked? Yeah. It's not about that thought of 10 years. What am I doing today? Oh. How is my day? What did I do today when I go to bed? Yeah. What kind of a person was I? Because that's the trajectory I'm on. Yeah. So as long as I make sure I'm improving every small thing, every small day, yeah. this week, okay, I learned from this person. This week, I got this book recommendation. Yeah. And ask. This morning, I had breakfast with the director of Stanbic. I yeah. begged her for her time. She was so nice. Yeah. She wasn't rushing. Yeah. She wasn't checking her watch. Anything else? I had my questions I came ready with. Yes. She says, read this, try this up, try this person, talk to this. Yes. Yes, yes, yeah. okay, I'm on it. I'll let you know how this goes. Yes. It's great. It's so, helpful. it's so helpful. And if you tell me, come at 7 in the morning, I will be there. Come at yeah. 10 at night, I will come. Yeah. When it's someone who is giving you their time yeah. and their knowledge and they're just sharing that with you, yeah. do whatever it takes, but seek them out. I was nervous. I've had her number and her card for like four weeks. <laughs> Too scared to text her. Hi. Yeah. We met the other day at a function. Yes. Do you have some time? Any time that's convenient for you. Yeah. And they say yes, and you go. You'll be yes. surprised. And I get that because sometimes I'll say, someone will send me a message, and I'll be like, yeah, sure, we can have a Zoom next week. Yeah. What? Really? I can talk to you? I'm like, of course. Yeah. Because it's important to pay it forward. Yeah. As so many are doing it for me, I also really have to do it for other women yeah. and make sure that we are all moving. Because there's no excuse these days. There are so many options. Uganda is growing so fast. There are so many avenues. We all have to move. Yeah. It's, our, it's up to us. We have the ability. It's yeah. now the responsibility and the direction we take ourselves in. <sighs> now, if you're not picking anything from this conversation, then I don't know what to tell you. But there are some really practical nuggets that are being shared here. And, and, and I just um, I want to have a continuing question on that, Natalie. Um, a lot of these people who are watching this right now, like, like Apollo uh, did in the survey, most of them are 20 to 35. But the conversations I've been having with these people is that, you know, I want to meet Beatrice Biamansi, but she's not easy to find. You see, I need to, Daniel, I need to meet Natalie Bitature, but, but how do I get to, to find her? I need to meet Anjuko. I need to meet, you know, uh, Matthias Katamba, my friend at DFCU. But uh, they're, they're almost pretty much an inaccessible. Inac 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 um, I want to meet Patrick Bitature, your dad, but I, how do I get to meet them? S so what kind of advice do you want to give these people? Firstly, why do you want to meet these people? Yeah. 
people who say, I just want to meet you to be there with you. No, the truth is you're not getting a meeting. Be prepared, be knowledgeable. Yeah. Yeah. And also my dad says, I can't be meeting everyone, everyone. who's starting from zero. It's not yes. helpful. The level of advice I'm going to give you, you've never experienced anything, you've never wow. started a business. He can advise someone who is much further in the, in the journey. That? Can you repeat that? that I cannot <laughs> you can't start, he can't advise what? someone from, from zero. zero. Yeah. Come when you've done and something. And many of them are from? Yeah. And those are the wow. ones who are the most eager and the most entitled. No, please me, I need an appointment. Please. Please, please. Wow. Me, this is why I stopped giving I like appointments that. to young men. Like you come with all your big plans. You've yeah. never done anything. And yeah. now you're harassing me for advice. I was like, <laughs> believe me, I have my girls here. The ladies know what they're doing. They're moving at a steady pace. Yes. And what I noticed is what Beatrice was saying. Yeah. You need to have the knowledge and apply it. The problem is people like to say, oh, I listened to this. I read this book. I have this podcast. How are you implementing it in your life? And I realize there's a big gap there. What I, I think I am very lucky with, the moment I learn something, me, I have to start doing it now. It I now. can't know and I'm not doing it. Yes. And I think that's what helps me to move faster. So when I was making the courses for the women in her, yes. you have a worksheet. It's well and good to listen to Natalie and you're like, yes, yes, great. That was such good advice. Yeah. Have you done the worksheet? Don't yeah. come for me. Don't ask to meet me. Have you done the exercises? Have yeah. you applied exactly what I said <laughs> in your own life? Yeah. How have you changed your life? How have you practiced it? What are you doing every day? Yeah. Then I'm happy to help you. Because also, you have better questions. Yes. You'll know what you need to know. So in the scope of learning, there's not knowing what you don't even know. We are the, those are the ignorant people yeah. who need to take themselves and start from zero. But then once you start to learn, you start to realize the gaps. <laughs> which are the things that are confusing? Which are the things that are hard for you to understand? Where do you need advice? What questions do you have? When you get to a roadblock, like, do I read a book? Do I do a course? Yeah. What do I need to do next? That's when you seek advice. And yeah. then you can ask for specific advice. I understood these principles, yeah. but this is the challenge I'm having. Lovely. Then you get useful advice, and you apply it. Then you move forward. And let me tell you, progress is the sweetest thing. Oh. Oh. You don't want to get in the big house and move backwards. As it stings. Being, we, are, we are animal of progress. Start from zero, but take one step at a time. Yeah. It is the best feeling ever. To take one step, one step, one step, you keep moving. One day you look back, you're like, oh my God, I came all this far? Yeah. And you enjoy the journey. Because yeah. the journey never ends, man. Never you're ends. going to keep learning. So the sooner you learn to enjoy it and appreciate the progress and get used to making small steps. Don't try to make one giant leap. Next month I'll be rich. Wow. You're just, no, you're just making like life harder for yourself. Next month you'll be exactly where you are today. Well, 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 well. You, you want to add something about that? Because many of them have been having challenges with, I want to meet you, but you, I, you, I, I really can't find you. <laughs> no, you yeah. know what, what I'm Natalie like, I've said? I've two more questions, but I'm giving it to you now. And then, yeah, yeah. Um, that thing about, I have so many people trying to meet me, and yet yeah. I don't think I'm, it's not that I'm, uh, you know, but, the, but, but you have. It, it, it's the <laughs> idea of a person sometimes that's attracting yes. you to them. You don't yes. even know what I have to offer. Yes. And the thing, she, in the beginning, I would just say yes to everyone. Yeah. Then I realized people were wasting, wasting my time. You, like, yes. I'm so sorry. Not in any way. Personally, if I'm going to meet someone, eh, you guys, I prepare. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. You have no idea. Like, I walk in, I know that you've given me 30 minutes. You know, my, my pastor, Moses Mukisa, there's a, there's, a, there's a person who helped we were reading his books and they and we applied stuff and it worked at our church. Yeah. So we flew all the way to the US to meet this man. And unfortunately, the person who drove us from the state we were to where we were supposed to go was late. So we were like 15 minutes late. We had 30 minutes with this man. Hmm? But we fe you know how much money we spent to go to the US for 30 minutes? Eh? There was a cost, of lots of, but it was yeah. worth it. Like we were like, thank you for 30 minutes. We were so prepared. We asked questions. We were drinking from a deep well. And you know yeah. that man has kept giving us more and more time and more and more time. He said because he sees we are using the resources. Yeah. That's the reward. You want more time. So if you've met a person of influence before and they didn't allow to meet you again, that's feedback. <laughs> whoa, because whoa, you whoa, probably whoa, whoa, wasted whoa. their time. People sit across the table and say, it's just yes. so nice to meet you. Yes. Oh my God, I just wanted to be with you. And I'm like, are you being serious <laughs> right now? So come in with, this is who I am. This is what I'm pursuing. Yeah. This is why I wanted to meet with you. I feel like you can help me here. I'm stuck here. Then listen. Don't be the one advising the person who, who you came for advice from. You meet Natalie, and then as she's talking, you're like, that reminds me. Oh, my God, I also tried it. Yeah. And you know what? I made 200K. Yeah. Yeah. Eh, yeah, actually, you know what you can try? Now you're telling her what to do. If you went to meet the person, listen more. Yeah. Go ready with questions. Listen more. And then when you're going to ask for another meeting, 
worked when you're asking you're telling them i did this yeah, I did it that. worked this i'm struggling i wanted to meet so that i find out more about so these days when you want to meet me i ask you to send me an email, an email with why you want to meet Indeed. me then I read through and sometimes it's just an answer away on email. We yeah. don't need to meet for 30 minutes. Yeah. But now like the thing that Natalie does her, <coughs> it began as this completely free thing. Yeah. There are people who are willing to do that and not come in when you put a cost to it. That says something. It, it, it's going to cost you. If it's not going to cost you, then you don't really value it. So people feel they're entitled, like you owe me. Yeah. You have all this knowledge, you yes. owe me. No, I don't. Yeah. It costs me to get this knowledge. I don't owe you anything, yeah. but I'm happy to share. So I, I, I would say that value the people you're going to meet who are ahead of you. Make it so worth their while that they, there are people who come in and I want to meet them again. Like I tell them, let's meet again in a month on this day. Why? You sense a hunger, but it's also not just driven by excitement. They are working towards something. And those are so exciting to help. Yeah. And I also hope that I am a person who's exciting to help on the other end. You know, oh when yes. you talked about the nine fools and how you're the ten, yes. I hope my friends are not counting me as the nine <laughs> fools they're hanging <laughs> with. Yeah. Over to you, Mr. Edmaster. All right, all right. Daniel. I got two more questions, and then no, we, we we are definitely going back to another round of questions, and there are quite okay. a number here. Awesome. Uh, also, compliments and so much that is coming in. I, I it just keeps wondering when you talked about nine fools. I started looking around, around, and around, and I started eliminating people. Eh? Uh, but uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you, Beatrice. There are quite a number of questions here. I'm going to read some. I will leave some. Uh, but what we tell you is we, we shall always try to labor to see that these kinds of questions are answered and then we, sh we share on uh, our social media pages. Uh, uh, this is my personal one. Daniel, then, um, and this is going to Daniel. Eh? There's so much happening for the ladies. They're doing all those sorts of her. They're doing African woman entrepreneurship. Like there's so much happening for the ladies. Nothing is happening for us, Daniel. I mean, why, why, why? Are we the nine fools? They are eliminated, <laughs> but you will you will get to that. So there are quite some questions here, and I want you to just pay some attention to them. Uh, you'll see how to squeeze them in. Uh, thanks for the for the opening conversation for opening the conversation. I'm listening in from Chigali. Thank you. Uh, that is just a comment. Can I use a credit card as part of my budgeting? Uh, just take note of that. There is a saying that they say there there is there is a saying, even though. You lay down, you lay down flat for people to walk on you. They will always say you are not flat enough. People will always, these people will always be especially. Uh, for, forgive, uh, I'm trying to read it. The family, be you. They're, they're giving a comment there. There's someone saying I earn 2.7 million monthly salary. I pay rent for 800 thousand. It's my biggest item on my monthly budget. I feel. I feel like it's a lot of money spent just on rent. How much can should one spend on rent and leave and not live beyond their means? Just take note of that question. Um just picking out one other one other uh this is coming from teams it's it's internal. Ugandans have large families that can that they cannot sustain. But all of us are afraid to tell our siblings and relatives to reduce on the number of children so they can live fairly okay as they will bring as they will as, th as that will bring trouble kindly help advise how can i inform my relatives to reduce on their large families without sounding like i am infringing on their rights that is andrew uh there's quite a number of questions but let's deal with those and then have the last round of, 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 of conversation Back to you, Daniel. An interesting last question. Uh, you want to say something about that, Beatrice? Yes, and how can I advise them to stop giving birth? I'm, I'm sort of like, <laughs> okay, I don't want to sound mean, but I'm, it's none of your business. Yeah. Seriously. Unless they're giving birth and bringing them to you to take care of them, then you have a say. But uh, if I'm having seven children, I want seven. Maybe yeah. I don't even want them to go to school but you're really concerned. Me, I just want many babies running around me. So I don't know. I know that that comes from a good place. Your heart, you're thinking, these people are having so many children. What's their plan for their children? I think what you should be thinking is, how many am I going to have? 
How am I going to make sure they have the future that they deserve? Am I planning for them now? Am I making sure that they are sorted? Unless you're thinking, I'm the one going to take care of these children. So I, I don't know how that, um, I feel like you're, you're going away from your personal responsibility and trying to take responsibility for something that's really. Let me tell you, the only person you can control on a good day is yourself. Sometimes on a bad day, even you can't control you. So I think it's best when you take care of you. If that person is under you, you're mentoring them, and you look at their finances, and maybe you feel like what's happening every two years they are giving birth, that's a conversation. But I found that when you try to advise someone who hasn't asked you for advice, you're wasting time. Yeah. And uh, uh, you get very negative energies, actually. Yes, mm -hmm. go ahead. I have a big challenge with this family planning situation in Uganda. May I blame our culture? Of course. It's not anyone's business to come and say you don't have kids. That's just, you're not going anywhere. I've tried, I've been abused, I can't stop doing that. <laughs> but my issue is, I don't think we're sensitizing young people about the risk and the benefit of children. No one is telling teenagers how their life will change when they have a kid. Women don't understand. They're taught, I'm supposed to get married, have children. That's my purpose. The more children, the better. Do you not think about how you're going to feed those kids? What kind of life they're going to have? What kind of life you will have if you're now there with your seven children? Men are also told, just have as many children as you want. I know men who have told their women, wives, I have to have more children. You can't tell me two is enough, four is enough. God gave me, brought me here to have children. Yeah. Guys, are you planning for those kids? How much time are you spending? Not even just money. Advising them, them, guiding yes. them. You can't just pop out kids, pop, put them in boarding school and say, I did my civic duty. I don't think we're sensitizing people about what it is to really be a responsible parent. Wow. And that's why there are so many relatives who keep giving birth, they keep coming to you for school fees. You're still paying, these ones are in secondary school, these ones are in primary school, he's telling you, we're having another <laughs> child. Yeah. It just baffles my mind. Like, really? So clearly they don't take personal responsibility, but I feel like I can't even blame you because you don't know any better. But we have to do a, a, a better job sensitizing people. Family planning is so essential. And if you see the Gates Foundation and the, mo the campaigns they are on right now, because family planning changes a woman's life, just by holding off having two years in between your children, you, you know that. You think most Ugandan women know that? Just as soon as she gets pregnant, next, next, next. Yeah. When do you work? When does your body recover? How yeah. do you look after the kids you have? And women just don't understand this. Or they're not told, or they're taught, you're supposed to have as many children as you can. Don't complain, don't cry about it. It's not your decision. Yeah. And I think that's completely wrong. Yeah. Family planning is what changed other countries. Women could control when they had children and how many they had. Because yeah. I don't know how much responsibility we're throwing back to men on that. There are too many problems in that area. It ah. changes a man's life as well. It yeah. does. Yeah, because he has to work harder. He has to take care of those children. That's more financial responsibility. If he's a responsible yeah. man. Maybe they are responsible. Sir, so, those are few that are there. There are many. But Natalie, how many are coming to tell you, oh, I have okay. another child, I'm I have another child. I'm here to defend the men yeah, that thank I you, get. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Know, I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, at the end of the day, many, women, me, you are kind of so decided. Mr. Headmaster here, mm. and I see a lot of responsible faces here of men. Of course, some of them are looking dangerous. And you know what? Most times, it's the women putting pressure for more babies. Maybe if they had careers, they wouldn't want more babies. It's true. So this, you see, this is, a, this is now a completely different subject. It has <laughs> nothing to do with <laughs> only <laughs> yeah, budgeting and financial <laughs> planning. And that's why, uh, but I think that, Natalie, in the sense that if someone is bringing me children to pay fees, we're going to have that conversation. Yeah. Because I can't be paying fees for your kids and you're popping more babies. No, no, no. I'll take you myself and make sure that we do family planning <laughs> so that I'm not, I'm not taking care of another child. Then, or you put back the responsibility. So I think that if the children are not your responsibility, yeah. Uh, you can do sensitization for the community and bring the other woman you're trying to sensitize. Hopefully she hears. Mm. Yeah. But otherwise, there's not much you can do. Well, um, that, that's the conversation. If we get started on, uh, we could actually <laughs> make another entire you know, session. But uh, Apollo asked something earlier. That, you know, Daniel, we have a lot of programs for women. Yeah. We have this program, this woman, this. We have this program for we, we, with my good friend Natalie here uh, for, for girls. How about us, the men? Mm. Uh, and I want to talk to you watching this program right now. Listen, uh, there's been some level of reluctance with us men. It's not like we are not called for men's conferences that is valuable. Not, not, not the Stinky Men Association, definitely. I mean, I know a lot of you are now thinking about, but I belong to Smao, Daniel, and Smao is helping. Yes, Smao is good, but, but, but here's the thing. You, you need to be very intentional about the quality of the association you keep. 
Um, I made friendship with uh, Amos Wakesa, who we go on a road run a lot with. We, we just go, we run 15 kilometers, 20 kilometers. But I've learned so much from that man in terms of investment, in terms of tourism. Th I'm putting some bit of, of, of interest in that area as well. But we need to be intentional about our quality of association. It's not like we, we don't have men's workshops, but somehow for us men, we have this kind of mentality that, you know what, I will take care of it by myself. Uh, I am enough. Listen, brother, we need help. Each one of us need to be with each other. We need to communion together. We need to fellowship together and, 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 and find ways of how we can be able to improve our finances, find ways of how we can be able to invest the money we make properly. And, and this association is there. Uh, I belong to some investment clubs, which is just for us men. And, and I joined recently. These are guys who are married, like married in church. Personal, I'm not yet. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll discuss that later. Uh, but, but I decided to... I decided to, to, to join this group. Number one, we are inspiring each other on how to be a good man. We're inspiring each other how to be a good dad. We're inspiring each other on investment ideas. Where do you put your money? What kind of uh, uh, properties can you acquire? And, and we meet twice a month. And we have also started a book club where we read. For example, we've just recently finished a book, The 5 a.m. Club by Robin, Robin Sharma. Amazing book. Like, like incredible book. So be intentional about seeking those places where you can be able to communion and fellowship with people who can help you. The quality of association, like Beatrice and Natalie said, it's absolutely fundamental. What has made Patrick Bittaturi, Natalie's dad, grow to the level that he has reached, it's quality of association. What has made Beatrice become such an incredible financial coach, she talked about this man who is my mentor as well. Pastor Moses Mukisa, an incredible brain, and he's such a charismatic fellow, and he'll actually want to meet you anytime and advise you. So be intentional about seeking out those places where and those people you can be able to meet together. Birds of a feather flocks together. But don't forget it. If you walk with nine fools, you become the tenth. What is the quality of your association? That is my take on that. Apollo, there were some few questions over there. Just repeat those questions, then we can answer them. And then I can answer the two, uh, ask the two questions I have. Oh, yes. I had one on rent. 2.7 in earnings, yeah. 800,000 in rent. Uh, they're asking, is it fair? Is it what, what can I... Uh, something, I think it was about rent, yeah. Okay. Be Beatrice, do you want to take on that? Uh, and then Natalie will also take on. And then you'll ask, I'll request you to, to say the second question before I can ask my two oh, questions. Oh, yeah. Uh, you need to talk about the black tax. That question oh, has come tax. back again. Black tax. Ah, uh, that's yeah. credit cards, yeah. And then there was one, I'm using a credit card to finance my budget. Uh, can I use a credit card to finance my budget? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, maybe we'll start with the rent. It's a yeah. quick one. Research shows that for you to be prudent financially, if you don't own your own estate, you shouldn't spend more than 25% of your income on rent. And I calculated and you're already spending 27% of your income. It would be good for you to sit with a financial coach or someone who's not even a coach, but who is prudent financially and look through generally your lifestyle and expenditures. Remember the first thing you do, have you secured saving? <laughs> then what's left should determine how you live. Yeah. So don't spend more than 25% of your finances on rent. So if you spend, that's what happened for us. We had to make that calculation and we were spending more than we could afford. And we had to move out into a smaller house. It hurt. Yeah. It hurt so much. Our kids were living in the garage. We had to, you know, make a yeah, hole and make a window and yes. paint it and make it feel, but I knew it was a garage. So I'm, I'm talking about like knowing, move backwards so that you can move forward. Yeah. And the earlier you do it, the better. I don't want to be doing that when I'm a grandma and I'm moving back into a garage. Yeah. So I did it earlier on. Um, so no. I, I think that it's good for you to look what is 25% and then decide why. That will increase your savings. Uh, it should still be a home that's comfortable and secure, but within your income so that you can eventually maybe be able to afford the one of 800000 or yeah. even more. Wow. Amazing. You want to add something about <coughs> that? I think that's perfect. Uh, um, so about this question on black tax. I thought I we answered black tax. It I was about supporting uh, family. It's about black people giving to their 
extended family. We answered that. I think we have answered that, uh, Mr. Yeah. Ed Master. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so can I ask my two questions? Please, please go on. The credit, credit card, card, yes, there's a credit card. Um. That's a big no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Credit is a problem. And I guess we haven't really addressed credit in terms of budgeting. Credit means you're spending money you don't, don't have know. in case you are unclear. So that is a big no when you're budgeting. I understand it helps with emergencies or sometimes, but you also have to know how much am I spending on credit. Even when you go down to a village level, ask every shopkeeper. They know everyone who they have credit. Mm -hmm. This one owes 20000 this one owes 5000 this one owes this. You don't want to owe people money. That's now a liability in your life. Because the moment you have money, those are the people you should really be paying first. And it's a bad habit. Because the more credit you get used to living on, the more money you make, the more credit you'll take. Mm -hmm. So now you're just digging yourself in a hole. A bigger hole, a bigger hole, a bigger yeah. hole. And one day you won't be able to get out of that hole. So oh, I suggest you okay. cut credit as soon as you can. Yeah. Don't spend money that you have not already earned or used and budgeted for it. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm not going to add on that. But what, I'm, I'm thinking maybe not credit card. I, I'm thinking about a loan facility uh, to do projects. Like you're a business person and you've got all these collaterals. You have the, the, the land, you have all these. But you wanted to, to develop one of your properties. And the bank is willing to give you a facility to develop that property. Um, in the context of budgeting, what would be your thoughts on that? Talk to me about debt. I'm just in any form. I'm so averse that I don't think I'm. I'm even. I'm even um, objective about the matter yeah. because it's simple. Uh, the the borrower is servant to the lender. You cannot control the bank rate. Okay. Yeah. At the end of the day, if I got a, a loan and something happened and it even went higher. Suddenly, everything, the thing that Natalie said, when you get any income, all you're thinking about is trying to stop the, the hole, reduce the hole from growing. And, yeah. that, and I know that people who, when you grow, that habit grows. We've, be, we've been there before. That habit grows. You actually get to a point where every time you think about an investment, you think, I'll borrow. So you're not thinking, how do I exercise myself to get to a point where I can have this money yeah. that can actually help me because when someone who has started there can get a loan and finance it because they have exercised themselves sure. but many people that's just the way out they're trying to get into a future that they've not exercised themselves into they you can't the afford it buy a yeah you yeah. buy a, you buy a car like yeah. you're buying liabilities you're trying to yeah. To finance a, a, a wedding, wedding loans. loans what's that like how is that an investment <laughs> you start your marriage in debt you you start with problems and from the very beginning, like so that people can think that you have a life. So for me, we advise young people, couples, have a little wedding. When you have the money, you will throw a big party because you're addressing a heart issue. You're trying to pretend to have a lifestyle you do not have. There are things I want right now. I can't afford them, and you know what? You they are saying no. You're buying the future and bringing it closer at a fee. Yeah, apparently that's what that's what the loan is doing for you. Yeah. So at the end of the day, people have lost properties. They've lost relationships. They've lost family, estates, because yeah. you try to go. We are impatient as a generation. Again, you're trying to do something that you're, it's too ahead for where you are. You know, at me, I look at myself and say, I want that, but I can't afford it. I'm not able right now. Yeah. I must work harder. Yeah. I must push a little more until I'm able to. And you know, there will always be land. Yeah. There will always be opportunities for business. Sure. Don't be impatient. That's just, for me, it's feedback in life that, that's a great opportunity. If you had been better prepared, yeah, you could have you could had have it. Taken it. Maybe let me find, how about we find, so one of the things we do together with as friends, yeah. we find land we can't afford or a business we can't, I can't do it alone. Yeah. Five friends, if you bring 20 million, I bring 20, 20 million. we are five, we can do 100. Land, yeah. So without borrowing, we are yeah. able to share. But many of us, I want it and I want it alone. Yeah. So you can do together until you get to a point where you can. So I'm so averse when it comes to debt that I don't yeah. think you can use any logic to tell me that it's good. Like whichever will sit down and I'll break it down and show you that it's bad. Yeah. So I think maybe I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. You I don't want to be a servant to, to the lender. I feel like I'm on the opposite side. <laughs> <laughs> As we swim in the debt. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I think it's it's very important that we actually get this opposite yeah. side of the context. Yeah. I think for businesses, it's about leveraging. Yeah. I agree. You can't bring from the future closer. You have to earn it. So I think at a certain point, this is why also banks. In the due diligence, they'll ask you, what are the last three years? 
how have you been running? Give me the audited accounts. Yeah. Give me the CVs of your staff. You have yeah. to show you deserve what you're asking for. Because yeah. you don't want to get money and you don't have the ability to continue to grow it. So that's why you need a really good track record. Yeah. The reason loans now come in handy is if you want to grow, but you need CapEx, capital expenditure. Yeah. You need to invest something that pushes the business to the next level. And the time it will take you to save, 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 save that money, it will take too long, you'll miss the opportunity. It's about the window. That's why you have to look at the time that the loan is going to give you. How much money can you reasonably leverage on the property or the business or the asset that you have to give it, get it to that next level so you can make up that money so much that you can afford to pay the bank and yourself and your get staff and money. everything yes. and continue the business's trajectory. So it has to be about the timing and the investment and the opportunity, which is why banks say no. But a lot of times, banks also, it's their duty to make money. Yeah. So if you take yourself and you qualify, it doesn't mean you should get a loan. Yeah. But I can understand, and I do encourage some entrepreneurs, yeah. once you have been doing this for a while, yeah. you have the track record, you're steady, you're dependable, yeah. you know what you can do. That's yeah. when you take that leap, because yeah. it is risk. Yeah. And the bank is your boss, is the truth. Yeah. When I think of who I have to pay at the end of the month, I have yeah. to think of the salaries, I have to think, I need to pay a the moment, the lights can't go off. I have to think of the water, it can't go off. The bank is there. Yes. The bank is who we all work for. Until you clear that loan, yeah. that's your boss. But they've given you this opportunity. Yeah. So it's like an investor. The bank is your, like your five friends. Either you do it that way or you get the bank. They'll charge you more than a friend would charge you. Yeah. But now you have to wait. Can I pay that off? Is it worth it? Will I make enough money that I pay the bank and it still makes sense for me as a business to take that loan? That's the only time I'd say it's useful for you. Well, you have it. I don't know how you choose to use it. But the information yeah. is right there for you. <laughs> so I want to ask my last two questions to these incredible friends of mine. They're my friends, but I don't know about you. But I've got these tantalizing friends. Yeah, so here's the thing. The last, the last two questions, the, last, uh, the second last one is to you, Beatrice. Planning for retirement. I'm 25. Why should I care about planning for retirement? Why should I think about budgeting for retirement? I'm young. Uh, let me enjoy my life. Uh, and, and this is a, a challenge that I think a lot of the young people I could easily be very ambitious and said over 99% of our young people, 25 to 35, don't really think about this retirement thing in their budgeting. What would be your advice to them? And that's the same question I wanted to answer this one. It's a great question, Daniel. And again, I think I like that I've been there. I've been that person who thought, I never, I couldn't even imagine that someone can plan 10 years ahead. Like, how yeah. can you think about 10 years from today? All I do is think about today yeah. <laughs> and then tomorrow. Yeah. And let's see what life brings. And that's totally irresponsible. You know, it's very irresponsible. Why? You're not going to stay young. You're 25 today, but today you're, you're no longer, to, you're, you're moving closer to 26. Yeah. Every day that you live moves you closer to 50, moves you closer to retirement. Yeah. And, and you know, you can have dreams for your retirement. Some of you don't. That's dangerous. You should be thinking about what do you want at that age? Because it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. We pray that it comes. It's good for you to grow old. Yeah. Um, and grow old in a way that's desirable because you don't want to be a burden. So um, this is the thought that I have when I do personal growth classes. I tell people that because we force people to think about the future. And we tell them that there's a 55-year-old you in the future who is depending on the 25-year-old you now to make the right decisions so that they can have a good life 25 years from now or 30 years from now. So if I make the decisions I'm making now without thinking about the future, then I'm not going to be ready for the future. I'm going to show up there and other people have to pick up after me and they're the ones who'll be talking about black tax because I'm the one they're paying <laughs> the black tax to and I'm the painful person they have to think about. Oh, I can be a blessing at that age. But the thing is, why should you think about the future? Guys, it's not just about us. How are we going to live this? That's how European nations have developed beyond us. They don't only think about themselves. They think about the next generation and living something beyond themselves. Natalie, her name can open some doors for her right now, not because of her, but because of her father. But it's now up to her, and I, I, I'm glad that she's not that kind of, that, that she's been trained differently. She has to also now think about the future. Like, what's going to happen? When, when Natalie is 55, she can't still be talking about Mr. Vitature, it, it won't matter anymore. Other words, that point you talk about now who they say their fathers were rich. Yeah. 
their wow. fathers owned this and the other. And right now, their name is a bad name. Why? Yeah. Because it's not about what someone else built. What are you building yeah. for yourself and for the others? So that I want my name to open doors for my children one day. Yeah. I want them to walk in and they say, oh, that's Beatrice's daughter. You know, there's, there's a good report about her. But then I want to train them to also open doors for the next generation. Because our personal finances are not only about us. They are about this nation. They are about the GDP of this country. This country can become desirable. It can be a place where you don't want to live. Because we have resource, we are rich, we, are, we have so much capacity, but we think so poor, and we think about today only. Yeah. So why should you think about 50, 50, 40 years from now, 30 years from now? Because it's coming. It's whether you want it or not, it's coming. But will you be ready for it? And I think the truth is that, guys, money <laughs> answers all things. So you can't only prepare spiritually and relationally and then have no money. Money. You need money for almost everything in life. It's going to open doors for you. So you have to take care of it now so that 30 years from now, you're not going to stay young. You're growing older. Every single birthday you celebrate moves you closer to retirement. <laughs> and to the grave. Yep. <laughs> it's the truth. Natalie? Um, a few years ago, I was teaching a long-term investment class in the village in Ibanda. And the first thing I asked was, what do you understand by long-term investment? Three months. Yeah, that was the consensus in the room. I was like, eh, 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 let me first take a moment. <laughs> we have to start from zero here. Yeah. But you have to think about the future. And it's easy when you're in your 20s and you think you have your whole future ahead of you. Life is just fun and opportunities. And one day I'll do this. One day I'll be this person. That one day should be day one. Today is day one of the one day. If you don't start doing it now, you're never going to be this person. And we all know those people who are in their 40s, they're acting like they're still in their 20s. And you feel sorry for them. They're yeah. still enjoying the party like we'd never stopped. And let me tell you, once you cross 30, you start to feel your body is aging. Wow. So I can't imagine what I'm going to feel like at 50. I don't have the energy I had now of when I was 24. And I could work for 16 hours yeah. and sleep for 4 hours and come back to the office or dance all night and be at the site at 7 a.m. Yeah. I just can't. Yeah. So if I feel that now, what am I going to feel like when I'm 50? I can't be chasing money like this then. I think something like NSSF, it's like a parent. You know, with kids, parents have to discipline you or tell you no for things or make hard decisions for you. So I understand a lot of my own staff don't like this NSSF. But I'm just give us our money. Why are they taking our money? You're going to need that money later. It's like someone forcing you to save. No one can force you now, but if we could, we should. And I would gladly say, say take it from me. Because... That is something you need to build discipline for, and it's so hard to build discipline. But you really are underestimating how much you're going to need it when you're older. When you lose the ability to earn the money that you have, you're earning now, we are all going to get slower. We are going to become less relevant. There's new technology, there's new jobs. There's the kids every day are learning something we don't know. Yeah. And that's at my age, and I'm not yet that old. Yeah. So you have to think, put yourself in that 55-year-old used shoes you really want to still be chasing you can't afford to retire if you haven't had kids now or you have your seven children you will still be paying school fees yeah. you're still going to need to be paying rent or paying a mortgage or building finishing your house you're still going to have expenses and guess what 55 is also not that old no. think of people who are 90 so from 55 to 90 how are you going to live if you have a job of 9 to 5 at 55 they're going to tell you time up you have to retire we're making way for all these unemployed youth if you have a business, you're going to yeah. be tired. Running yeah. a business, by the time you're 55, you feel like you're 70. So you're not going to have the energy or ability. Yeah. So just do yourself the favor and take the steps you can now. Yeah. Put in those extra two hours when you're in your 20s, because I assure you, by the time you're 45, you won't want to know those extra two hours. Yeah. You're going to be tired. You're going to have kids. You're going to have other levels of stress. Yeah. You need to do what you can when you can. Yeah. Don't put off things to tomorrow. One day, one day. People who come with me with one-day plans... I'm just yeah. like, man, I want That's to shake it. you. Yeah. Start today. What can you do today and tomorrow and next week? And by next month, I'll have a difference in my life. Yeah. Once you start applying things and making changes, then I feel I'm encouraged. I'm optimistic because you're moving. As long as you're moving, you will get somewhere. Yeah. But once you're not moving, you're not thinking about it, you're not worried about it, you're moving backwards because time is always moving forwards. So if you're not moving forwards with time and you just think you're standing still, you're not standing still. You're moving backwards. Everyone else who's moving forward with time is going to pass you and leave you, and it's going to be harder to catch up because you won't have the ability that you did in your 20s. 
if I could go back in time and advise my 22-year-old self, I would tell her, start moving now. No. Don't wait two more years. Yeah. Put in the work. Go for those extra meetings. Yeah. Say yes to things. Ask for mentors. Read more books. Yeah. Don't sleep so much, girl. Get up. <laughs> I wish I could. Because yeah. now I feel it. And it's only yeah. because of putting in the work and you really realize what it takes every day. Yeah. When you see successful people, oh, they have these nice lives. I bet they don't do anything all day. Yeah. Oh. You have no idea. The more successful I see someone now, yeah. the more stressful I know their life yeah. is. Yeah. I don't envy you anymore yeah. because it's just more problems. <laughs> and the sooner you realize what that effort is and what it takes to make money, the sooner you start running and you start moving, the sooner you wake up yeah. because it's a lot of effort and it takes a lot of time and so many other resources and it impacts your whole community. So the sooner you start moving, the better. Even if it's small, small steps, you start moving. That's the most important part. Amazing. Uh, let me just qualify something that Natalie said, that when you see somebody who's really successful, you don't envy them. But let me put it into context. I would rather be really, really successful <laughs> than deal with some of those stress at that level. I think that's a better level to deal with them stress. Um, the essence of knowledge is to do. If you could just paraphrase what my good friend and sister and mentor now, Beatrice, uh, has talked about. So all we are asking you is, all this knowledge that you've been equipped with, you have an arsenal of ammunition to use. The choice is yours. The choice is mine. After all this is done, Apollo will go back to his home, his lovely wife and kids. Beatrice will go back to our home. Daniel Chaudhry will go back to my home. Natalie will go back to our home. And we'll all be doing the things that we've got to do to take care of us. <coughs> I hope you make the right decision to take all this information and use it to make your life better. My last question to these two wonderful ladies is, what are those quick fire bullet proof nuggets about budgeting <laughs> that you want to leave these people with? Conclusively, what are those quick fire bullet proof nuggets? In as far as personal budgeting is concerned, business budgeting is concerned, that they could take and start acting on right away to improve their lives. Go ahead, Natalie. Firstly, have a budget. That is the nugget I want you to go with. Yeah. Have a budget. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to know so much about it, but just start. If you can sit today and now sit and think, how much am I spending on this? Look for receipts. Look for your mobile money receipts. How much did I spend on that? How much did I spend on this? Start approximating, estimating, and planning. So look backwards and assess, what did I spend in the last week? What did I spend in the last month? Then do that as you move forward. First, collect the information. You will be so shocked at the end of the month when you're like, ah, I didn't know I spent all this much money on that. And that is the information you need. It is now your ammunition. You can now use that to help yourself, to help yourself to move forward. So have a budget is the first thing. And then change your mindset. I feel like that is the thing holding back our country the most. Yeah. We have the resources. We have the ability. There's no such thing as Ugandans are lazy or we are stupid. It's just the mind. The ignorance, the entitlement, just read a book, open up something, ask a question. Don't think I know everything. I feel like I can't say that enough to young people. You are, we, are, we are hurting ourselves. It is only our future. We can't keep blaming the government or the old people or this happened or the NGO. Guess what? They're all going to be gone in the next 50 years and we will be the ones here running the country with whatever we planted today. So we have to plant well now. Because like we're saying about NSSF or with savings for later, we are the ones who are going to have to deal with these problems later. So you think about it. Are you just passing yourself the problem? It's OK. It's future me's problem. <laughs> future you has other things to deal with. Any problem you can solve today, yeah. deal with it today. And the biggest one is your mindset. Read, learn, open your mind. Start slowly. Start small. Do one thing in the week until you build the habit, till you get disciplined, till you get stronger. I love that you say exercising. It is exact exercising. Exercising is not just for the gym. If you see your friend who was fat, then they became skinny. Or your friend who was small, then they became very strong and buff. It's because they put in that work every single day. Yeah. They exercised. They did the right things. They ate the right things. They went to the gym. They ran. They swam. They did what it took. But we have to take that same attitude in everything in your life. In your emotional life, in your spiritual life, your financial life, in your relationship. You have to practice things. So everything you learn, implement it. And keep learning. If someone doesn't go to the gym for six months, no matter how fit they were, they will not be fit in six months. You can't say, I did it, I went to the gym, I'm done for life. That is the same attitude with everything. Yeah. You have to keep going. 
exercise it every day you get stronger you get faster you get smarter you get the experience and then it's useful and apply it there is really no use in information that just sits in your head it's completely useless unless you're using it every day it's helping you make decisions and you're moving in the right direction then you might as well have not read those books or had those discussions or listened to that podcast don't waste your time go watch a music video yeah. but unless you are implementing it that's what you need and I feel like it kills me. I see young people all day. They're watching TikTok. They're on Snapchat, paying for MBs. I'm like, do you know how much information is on the internet? That same money you spent could change your life yeah. if you listened to something useful and actually implemented it. Completely change your life. And there are so many stories and examples from every village, from every district. At least today we can say I'm there are those example. stories. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So you have no excuse. We have no one to blame. Take responsibility and change your mindset. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I gotta take water on this one. That, that was deep. That, like, that was really deep. Thank you, my sister. You know, I really appreciate you. My pleasure. Beatrice. Yes, sir. Quick fire, bulletproof nuggets. They can take away and start acting on right away. Maybe I'm going to reiterate what Natalie has said. I think a lot has been said today. And we have become information junkies. I bet that the people who are watching right now, you're the kind of people who like learning environments, growth environments. Listen, the evidence of your knowledge is in your results. It's as simple as that. If you're going to say you know something, you have to show the proof for it. If there are no results, you don't know it yet. So what are you going to walk away with? From today, one thing. Don't even take 10, 3, 5, 1. What one thing are you going to do and exercise to make sure that you can say, I watched that NSSF learning, financial literacy, and I had this and I did this. It worked or it did not work. And so I have more questions. Because you should be asking questions based or not based on your, you know, to exercise your intellect and just have this nice intellectual conversation. But it's that these are the results. I want more information because I want to grow. That's the first thing. Secondly, take responsibility for your life. Stop blaming people. Decide where do you want to go. Do you even know where you want to go financially? What will taking responsibility look like? Have a plan. Planning is not for certain types of people. It's for everyone. If you have no plan, you're aiming at nothing and you'll hit it every single time. What's your plan? Then on that good plan which you have, what are you doing daily? You know, John Maxwell says that your life will not change until you change something you do daily. Your daily agenda, because daily things create habits. So where are you headed, okay? One of the things you need to know, if you're, for example, someone who they send money towards NSSF, your employer does, you know that there's a time I didn't even know how much money I had in NSSF. I didn't even know my NSSF number. Like, that's how bad it was. That lack of responsibility. It's like, they take my money. It's yours. Get to know how much is it, where is it being invested, all these things. Like, why are you doing what you're doing? Where do you want to go? And of course, the continuous learning and your friends, your company, it's going to kill you or it's going to raise you up. Like, you have to decide, who are you hanging with? Take responsibility. Are those people going forward in their finances? If they are not, you're digging a hole. You're getting advice about your finances from someone who is constantly broke. And then you sit and compare notes and laugh about your problems. You're in trouble. Your early years are for hunting. So that in the evening years, you're dividing the spoil. So hunt. Be a hunter. Go out there. Have a plan. Get people who are ahead of you. Hungry people. It's not bad to think about money. Let me tell you, being money-minded is not only f it's not for people who are rich. It's actually broke people think about money more than rich people. Because you're thinking how to get it from people. Half the time, who can I beg? Who can I you at? Who can I manipulate? So get money-minded, not in terms of just because you love money, but because you're trying to buy freedom. Money buys you. That's what one time Patrick Vitatore told us. Money buys you freedom. When you have money, you decide whether you want to go in economy, business class, or first class. When you don't, your money decides. You go to the restaurant, it decides whether you're looking at the right-hand side of the menu. Then you see 10K, water. 10K water. Everywhere you go, you drink water. They think you're healthy. <laughs> Daniel, I'm not talking about you. But it's just that that's what your pocket is telling you. Don't want you like the freedom to sit and say, let's eat. Do you understand? But that shouldn't come from. So please think about the future you want. Start moving towards it. Get friends. Read books. Exercise yourself. Do something every day that moves you towards the future that you desire. But if you have no future you desire, 
you're not moving towards anything. You just keep living and saying, it was a good year based on what? Based on what exactly is it a good year? So get into spaces that challenge you, that push you, and take full responsibility for where you are and where you want to go. Well, well, well. Um, yes, I buy them waters of 10,000 shillings. I mean, <laughs> actually a little bit more than that. So, um, so ladies and gentlemen, it's been uh, my profound pleasure to moderate this, this session. What, what I leave you with is be brave. This life rewards the brave. Uh, You've got to be fearless in some of these decisions, and you have to do things that work for you. Ultimately, we're going to die anyway. But before that time comes, you want to know that you're given a good shot to leave this world a better place for the people that are your offsprings, your relatives, and also that you had a good ride before your time was up. I thank you, and I give you back to the headmaster. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. I kept, I kept listening and listening, and uh, I was wondering, where am I being a culprit? Who did I buy water for? Earlier today, <laughs> earlier today, I had to award one of my friends with water. They did something for me, and I gave them water. So now they know. Now they know. Thank you so much. There is one question, and this goes to the ladies. Uh, it is both from the groups, but also I, I, I add my weight. What plans do you have for the men? What plan do you have for the men? Because I'm not going to get that, that, that answer from Daniel. Yeah. Truly, he is yeah. harnessing his, <laughs> uh, his reach from the... But what plan do you have for the boy child? I'll start because I'm very passionate about men. Uh, the way Natalie is passionate about women, I'm so passionate about men. Like, even my dissertation was on the boy child. I was like, who's taking care of the boy? Boys. But you know, the, I'm now I'm, I've reached a point of absolute frustration. Because <laughs> with the men, and, and you, you, you brought yourself, you brought this question here. Why? I feel like when you give opportunity to the women, they show up. And I'm speaking from experience from a person who really cares about men. The women show up, they do the work. The men, you will, I have classes, I run classes, straightforward financial growth, yeah. you know, I'm made for more masterminds for personal growth, whatever. You always have like 15 women signing up and you're pushing them to another round and you have like one guy, if any, shows up. We run, we run mentorship classes, we'll say, oh, because you're a woman. No, I run one with my husband, mentorship. There's, there's, there's one young man here in the room, he's in that mentorship class. We have about 30 Two women and like eight men showing up. You advertise it equally. I think that men, you have to face yourselves and say, the opportunities are there. Why are you not showing up at the table? Why are you not showing up? You, I think that you're proud. I'm going to put it out there. Men, I think you think you know. I think you think you know. I think it's a macho thing. Men need to have it together. You're not asking questions. You're not putting yourselves out there. Where I lead, I keep telling the men, take responsibility. I give a task to a guy and a, a man and a woman. The woman runs with it. She asks questions. The man just becomes passive. So I am so frustrated with the men because I am a, I'm a men's activist, okay? I'm one of those who speaks up for the men. I, I, I defend them. I, but I'm, I've reached a point of telling my husband, I'm going to stop because it's like the men won't show up. They won't push, they won't carry their own weight, they won't ask questions. I think there's a pride men need to give up. You need to get humble. Show up, pay for classes, because I feel like men, you're more interested in paying for the toys that Amen. on the outside, I have a big car, I have this big house, I bought a plot of land. They, when they meet men, they're talking about Manchester United. Who cares? How many shares do you all own in Manchester United? Get into spaces that are building you. Have real conversations about real issues. So men, I feel like you have the opportunities equally that women have, but you're not maximizing them because you're being passive. You're being so passive and that this particular generation, we're in real trouble. Women are rising up like crazy. And soon we're going to start having the, men, the boy child problem. Because, but also stop, a woman rising up doesn't mean you need to go down. We can have a strong woman and a strong man. And there's no problem with that. So for me, I think that men, you need to give up the idea that as a man, you have to figure life out. You're going to get slower. Because when I ask for directions, I get there faster than you who is going around 25 channels to get the right route because you're, not, you're, you're too proud to stop and ask questions. So I think that men, there's something that needs to happen for you. Show up, pay for classes, ask questions. Meet with either men or it doesn't matter if she's a woman. If she's making it, ask her. Doesn't make you less of a man. Because for me, I'll ask men and women alike. I don't care. So I feel like women have become hungry and empowered. Even when you meet them for interviews, you will employ the woman. 
Because the men won't look you in the eye, they won't answer, they won't push back. And I'm, and, and I'm generalizing here, but I'm talking about my experience right now is I am so frustrated with a man. Much as I'm trying to push for men, I feel like, what do we need to do to get you to just rise up, say something, do what you're supposed to do, carry your weight, push. Ah, men. So for me, my answer is, I'm frustrated, show up. Okay, show up, the opportunities are there. Stop being proud, ask questions, get into spaces where you can grow and learn because you don't have all the answers. Thank you, thank you, B3. Natalie, you don't have to answer that question. <laughs> but answer this one, uh, because the men, you've gotten the message, you've gotten the message. Two, qu uh, three reads, three books you recommend for reading. And then Daniel, kindly also share with us your books. Uh, she's, an, she's an author. She's an author. Kindly look out for her books in the bookshop. Uh, Daniel is an author. <laughs> Natalie is actually Dr. Natalie Bitature. Dr. Natalie Bitature. <laughs> kindly, your three reads. Uh, I would suggest Atomic Habits by James Clear. Oh, because everybody needs to work on their habits. Your habits really define who you are, and he breaks it down so well with useful examples. Yeah. I like Awaken the Giant Within by Tony Robbins. I feel like that's very inspirational, and it helps everyone to understand there is greatness within you. It's up to you to unlock your potential. And then I'm trying to think of a finance book. Personally, they don't read a lot of finance books. Is the truth? Richest Man in Babylon. Yes. That's a good it's finance a good book. book. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Thank you so much. But Can I also say mine? At NSSF, you're coming next. At NSSF, we believe money is 95% habits. So the more books on <laughs> habits you. you read, the more you will actually uh, get to your own financial journey. Yeah. He's an author. Yeah. Kindly share with us those books that you authored and where we can find them before yeah. we can wrap it up. It is past our time. But please do that. No, no, thank you. Uh, let me also add my voice on the books that are very important. Yes. The 5 a.m. club. Please read that book. Success uh, Principles, uh, Jack and Phil. A very good book. But come on, read Think and Grow Rich too. Th that's a, a timeless book that will really shape you. And read my book, Become a Sales Superstar and Dominate Your Market. Everybody's a salesman. If you want to do great in life, you've got to sell something. Just your ideas, your skill sets, your product, your services, selling is a skill that all of us need. So I've written a book in sales, Become a Sales Person, dom Dominate Your Market. You can get it in a restock. But also, be somebody who is very adept about writing down your schedules. A lot of us will work without schedules. So I came up with the, the Warriors Productivity Planner to help you to be more productive. So this is like a diary, personal diary. It's a three-monthly uh, uh, program where you write the five top things you must do daily. That if you can just achieve those five things, you're good. You don't have to do 10 things, 20 things for you to be successful. Five solid, and then you move on like that. So there's so many other products that I'm working on. You can get them on my website, danielchaudry.com, or this institute website, dcsalesinstitute.co.ug. But you can get these books at Aristoc as well. And book point in Bukolobi. Says Mr. Fanta Maglorious. Asante Sana. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. And finally, Beatrice, you're, you're a coach, certified coach. You're running mastermind classes. How do we get to you? Oh, that's a good question. You can, it's very easy. Beatrice Biamanzi at gmail.com. You can drop me an email or you can write another email to powerfullivingug at gmail.com. And we'll get back to you quickly. Uh, to help sign you up for either personal growth or straightforward financial growth and, and many other masterminds. I'm part of a group called um, Momentum Leadership Group, and we help teams and individuals win. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. That marks the end of our class today. It is our monthly parade when we come and discuss about money. I remain yours, the headmaster. My thanks go out to the live stream, live extreme team, which does this. Smart TV. Smart TV is broadcasting us live. Thank you so much. Uh, my own team, the NSSF team, thank you so much. Let's catch you again on the 20th of April when we talk about your time to take risk. Thank you so much. <laughs>